I'll give it a couple minutes here and see uh, see if I can get some people in here. I set this stream last night, hopefully give people a little advance warning. I was planning on going live this morning. I said, boy, somebody's, boy, Bud Brutus, man. Goodness gracious, Bud Brutus. I'm gonna shout him out here in a minute when I'm 100% certain I'm live. Yeah, let me just make sure I'm live here and we're gonna hit some super chat, y'all. Goodness gracious. For those of you tuning in after the fact, maybe you've watched this live stream after we're already done filming and aired. I'm in a creek today, really foggy morning out here, um, which is good because it's, we're into, what's today, September 20th, 21st. It's supposed to be like 90 degrees today. So this fog was hopefully gonna buy us some time this morning before the sun comes out and melts the face of the earth. <laughs> so summer's making its, its final run here. But uh, I'm getting ready to get baited and get cast out here in just a second. I'd hoped to already have lines in before I went live, but those of you who know me know punctuality's never been my strong point. So I'm about to get lines cast out here in just a second. And we're gonna hopefully catch some fish today. Uh, I think we're gonna do good out here. I have baited this area in advance. Uh, baited it two days ago, and then I baited it again last night, and so, I think we're gonna catch some fish today. Yeah, we got a bunch of people in here now. Let me just shout out Bud Brutus a second here, y'all. Bud Brutus has lit me up first thing. This is back from vacation, excited, ready to sit back and enjoy the show. Good luck, Justin. Then he hit me again. This is no fun watching a live stream a week after. Glad to be here for this one. And then finally, he says, keep the channel rolling, Justin. Man, Bud Brutus, y'all, has hit me up with $90 here to start with before we even got lines in. Thank you so much, Bud Brutus, man. You are awesome. I hope you had a great vacation and I'm glad you made it home safe and are watching here today. That is so cool, Bud, man. I really appreciate the heck out of you. CJN with the five spots has just got home off to bed. Have a fantastic day. I'll catch the replay. Well, thank you, CJ. Hope you sleep well, buddy. Man, Bud Brutus, man. That's what I'm talking about. So here's what we're gonna do, y'all. I mean, I could sit here and look at this camera all day, but ultimately, let's hopefully reel in some fish. We'll make some casts here. Well, we're gonna do three rods today. I'm in my Old Town kayak today. I got problems with power pole. The last live stream, one of my power poles crapped out on me. Well. Warranty process on that didn't go as smoothly as the last time. Last time I had a problem with a battery pack, they shipped me a new one. I had to just send the other one back. Well, this time I got to send the power pole in, 30 freaking dollars in shipping to send that thing back. They got to evaluate it. They got to look at it, see if they can fix it and then send it back. Well, it got there yesterday I guess they took one look at it and realized it was a piece of junk that couldn't be fixed. So they're sending me a new one out. It's in the mail, but who knows? So I've put my single power pole on my old town kayak. And I got a dumbbell tied off to the front. We're gonna see how this works. I'm not a fan of having a rope up here that I've got to navigate fish around to land. It is what it is. We're gonna roll with it today and see how it goes. But, for bait today, gonna mix it up. On one of these rods, we're gonna try a lima bean. We're gonna see how that'll do us. The other two rods I'm gonna throw out, we're gonna have worms, pack bait and worms. Goodness gracious, try not to, try not to spill that thing everywhere. I don't want lima beans in my lap this morning. So let's get baited up y'all, enough of me talking. I got my fake corn there on the hair. I'm gonna run this hook through the, through the lima bean. I'm just gonna put a single bean on there to start with. Now let's get us some pack bait on. Yeah, y'all, I baited this area. I come out, what the hell is today? Today's Wednesday, right? I come out Monday, 
around lunchtime and I baited this area real good, five gallon bucket. And then last night I come out, just kind of tested. I fished for an hour, I caught three carp and a catfish in an hour. And before I left, right before dark, I hit it with another five gallon bucket. So they ought to be some fish in here feeding up. This is the same spot that I filmed the live stream at last week where we didn't do worth a diddly poo. And I hadn't baited then. You know, I, I hadn't done anything. And we got some channel cats and some turtles. And so we need something a little better today. I need some live stream redemption. So we're going to see what we can do this morning. But anyway, we're six minutes into the stream and I ain't even got a line in the water yet. Amateur hour in here. There's one out. This and here, y'all, running low on line. Can't, the one on the left here, y'all, don't let me dilly-dally around. Because if we dilly-dally, we getting spooled. Nobody wants to get spooled on a live stream. And it wouldn't take a big fish to spool me either. Okay, that was the bean. Left rod is the bean, y'all. Now let's get us some worms. Oh, night crawler up in here. Yeah, I went to store last night and get some more worms. I've started a run here locally on the Panko. You can't hardly get it at Walmart anymore. They have three cans left. I clean them out every time I go. But uh, I got them and I was over there and I was like, you know, I'm gonna find a bean to throw out. Let's pick a bean at random. So I got them lima beans. I've had people tell me, mention various beans from Buffalo. I've not tried beans yet, but the worms, my last few trips, the worms really haven't done much for us on the buffalo. And so I'm just kind of biding my time on the buffalo, y'all. I got that trip coming up here in a few weeks in November. I'm going to hopefully learn what the hell I'm doing. And then once I learn, I'll be able to experiment more effectively. All right, middle rod is our fancy new reel that I just can't catch anything big on. Still got the jinx going on it. And for those of you watching at home, or especially after the fact, I am in my Old Town kayak today. Not quite as stable as the Hobie. So you may see the camera doing this a little bit. It is what it is. Doesn't bother me none, but I know for video viewing stuff, it can be a little obnoxious. When I'm filming regular videos, you don't notice it as much because I've got the action camera, the GoPro there, and it's got image stabilization, so it, it filters all that movement out. But the iPhone sucks, and so you don't get that. I either imagine something or that middle rod that we just cast out got hit. We'll see, I may have imagined it. It'd be great if we could go down to one rod today, y'all. How awesome would that be? If we got the bite going so good, could literally go to one rod. I guess, I guess Tractor Man's gonna come right down here too behind us. We needed some tractor noise on the damn camera today. I mean, it's 7.30 in the morning, foggy, all kinds of dew out. They don't give a crap, man. They got work to do. All right, next bait going out here.
We're also trying this rod holder set up here on the Old Town too. We'll see how that goes. We'll see. We may have to tinker throughout the morning here. That one's kind of going to be tough to reach actually. All right. Let's stick our, let's stick our bean somewhere here. Them somewhere out of the way. Let's get our worms out of the way. Oh crap, I just spilled that dang can of beans under the kayak here, under the seat. It's got bean juice going everywhere. Let me turn it. Dang gum it. I was worried that was going to happen. Yeah, we'll see how this setup works today. We may have a little difficulty landing fish around this rope here and a dumbbell in front. So far, I'm not, I'm not doing a lot of this with the kayak, which is why I paid extra for the double power pole setup is so that I wouldn't do this, but power poles are garbage. They're, the quality of power pole is second class trash. That's what they are. Two malfunctions now and the two months that I've had them. Anyway, let me get this camera here and let's let's chat a little while, y'all. We got our lines out. We got our we got our bait set up here. Let me experiment one second here, y'all. Y'all want to watch this view or my face? Y'all tell me. Y'all just tell me what you what you want to do there. Well, I got to hit some super chats here. I, somebody's, somebody's done hit me up hardcore. Bud Brutus done hit me with $90 here before I even got going. James Shuey, Mac McKinnis, Kevin's Trophy, Cat and Bassin in the house. There's Big Wrench Catfish and all club members. Daniel Duran. Um, oh, my man Ed from Oklahoma, he says, I'm going to drop a hundo off before I get back under the welding hood. He says, hey, when you refer to the shallows, do you mean 20 feet and under, 10 feet and under? Well, Ed, it kind of, thank you for the super chat, Ed, man. Ed's another one always loading me up. It kind of just depends. You know, when I talk about the shallows today, I'm out here in three to five feet, um, Typically, if I'm catfishing, talking about the shallows, I'm usually talking about 20 foot or less, usually, on the catfishing. But if I'm in one of these creeks, it's usually, you know, a few feet deep. You just never can tell what I'm talking about, Ed. <laughs> you never know. Hell, usually I don't know what I'm talking about. Thank you again, man. Be safe under that welding hood. He's out there at work today. He's coming to the conference, catfish conference in Kansas City. I'm gonna meet him in person. There's Douglas Medlin in the house. Paul Boyd. Rick Ratliff, I'm liking these cages so far. No complaints yet. Uh, we got A plus Homestead with a hundy. Man, A plus is given an A plus super chat. Thank you, A plus Homestead. He says, hey, JJ, AJ here at A plus Homestead. I'm going through a very difficult time and your content takes my mind off things and provides some joy in life. Keep up the good work, brother. Well, thank you so much, man. And I'm, AJ, I'm sorry to hear you going through hard times right now, man. I hope I hope whatever you're going through, I hope it turns out for the best and and I hope it I hope it passes for you soon, whatever whatever's going on. I hope uh, you know, it's just one of them difficult times in life that hopefully works out for the best, man. Thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. Glad you could be in here this morning. There's Keith Doc Reed. What's going on, Keith? Oh man, Bud Brutus is back with another 1999, y'all. He says, hey Justin, will we get to see Mama J fishing beside you anytime soon? 
I doubt it, bud. She ain't much of a fisherman. I don't think I'd get her on. I don't think I'd get her out fishing, number one. Number two, I definitely ain't going to get her out on camera. She definitely wouldn't be going for that. <laughs> I guarantee it. You can't even hardly get her to take a picture at Christmas time. I'll thank you for them. Man, Bud Brutus. You know what, y'all? You know, Bud said he had been on vacation. I guarantee him to you, he's been out there to Las Vegas on vacation and he's hit the jackpot because he's loaded me up out here this morning, man. Bud Brutus has come in here dropping, dropping 20s and 50s down. So he's hit it big out there in Vegas, y'all. I know he has. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you've had a good trip out there in Vegas, bud. Okay, let's see. Let me get down. Jeremy T says my face. Rick Ratliff says the poles. Mad Goatee says face. Both face. Rod's face. Well, we got, boy, we've got a mixed bag here of people. A lot of people, a lot of people want my, my beautiful face and some people want the rods. I guess we'll just mix it up. We'll do a little of both. Cause I want you all to see my beautiful face at some point. There's Howard Kersey with a $3 super sticker. Thank you so much, Howard. Glad you could join in this morning, man. We're gonna hopefully catch some fish today. There's Fish and Dixie in the house. Lord Taylor B with a 40. He says, next time you go out carp fishing, try to find some trout chow, millet, or soybean for your pack bait, and then just experiment with different flavor like vanilla, grape, cherry. Carp also love spicy, anything spicy. Okay. Well, thank you, Taylor. Thank you for the super chat there. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do some more experiment and I've had a good thing going with this pack bait that I've been using and the worms, but I'm going to definitely be doing some experiment with different baits and stuff and see if I can tinker with it and play around and see if we can, see if we can uh, have some better success with something else. Being man, I'm on the upper section of Watts bar this morning. Let's see. All right. I've had more requests here to look at my face. Y'all hear that? It's Wednesday morning, 7.30. We got Chainsaw Man out here. Tractor Man and Chainsaw Man already. Lordy days, man. You can't escape them. Anywhere you go, there's always somebody doing something. Jared Hall says, have you considered going live to both YouTube and TikTok? You could double dip me. Yeah, I don't care about that. Um, I've seen some other guys do both at the same time, and I think it, you, I can't keep up with one chat box, let alone two. And I hate the TikTok audience. Um, mostly it's, it's people popping in for three seconds to ask where you're fishing at, how many fish have you caught, what bait are you, it's the same five questions the whole damn stream because nobody's watching more than a few seconds and you don't make squat. I mean, Lord, my YouTube, all, look how much, you know, super chats people done in here. TikTok takes like 70% and it's last time I went live on TikTok, I made like a dollar and something. <laughs> so I'd rather, I'd rather just, I'm more of a YouTube person. My audience seems to be more of YouTube people. And so we're going on YouTube. Let's see. No, Derek Parker, I ain't done. I ain't caught as many stripers this year, um, but also haven't done as much catfishing this year either. And typically one of my best months to catch accidental stripers while catfishing is in June during the spawn. Seems like when the catfish leave a lot of those deeper places to go spawn, the stripers move in. And this year I didn't do a lot of catfishing during the month of June during the spawn. I did mostly carp fishing. And so I think that hindered a lot of my accidental striper catches. But aside from that, I just haven't, haven't lucked into any really. It's been a while since I've got any. We 
got Douglas Mellon says, if they're biting the rod, view it at the comedy show your face. Hopefully, we're all business out here today, Douglas. Douglas, no comedy today. It's all fish catching day. I can feel it in my bones. I mean, I've dumped 10 gallons of bait out here. Chainsaw man. I got the fancy microphone. Hopefully it's gonna drown a lot of that crap out. But I mean, they're literally like right here behind me. Oh, oh. Right rod was getting a little, a little something, something going on. A little something, something. They had a, I think we're gonna have one go down here in a second on that right rod, y'all. Something was pecking. Might be a bluegill after that worm or something. Eh, maybe not. I may have spoken too soon. Hooks and hammocks. There's my man Chris with the 10 spot. He said we caught one common and one buffalo yesterday. First time Telly ever caught a carp. Well, thanks, Chris, and congrats to Telly on her first carp. She may end up liking them carp more than the catfish when it's said and done. No kicking chicken. I don't know anybody eats carp around here. I wouldn't eat nothing out of this water anyway. Oh, oh, no, it did get hit. I'm pecking that worm over here, y'all. It's gotten hit a couple times. I right, have a good day fishing, Dixie. Whitney McChrystal, if you got Google, you can Google all the toxins out here. I ain't you Google, Whitney. I've done videos talking about it. I've mentioned it 6,000 times and people keep asking me. Kingston coal ash spill, Google's your friend. And I think a middle rod there's got a little something going on too. The line over there that you can't hardly see is bouncing a little bit. We're going to get bit here soon, y'all. It's going to happen. I can feel it today, man. I'm, I'm feeling it down in my loins, y'all. Because, again, I had baited this spot about noon-ish, lunchtime-ish on Monday. And I come out yesterday evening right before dark for just an hour or so before dark just to see if there was fish here to see if I wanted to go live today. Because I didn't want another repeat of last week where we catch turtles. And, you know, I caught three carp and a catfish within that hour. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to dump another bucket out and we're going to be good to go this morning. So I'm confident there's some fish here in this area. We just got to get them turned on to our lima bean and our worms. And we need Chainsaw Man to get done or take a break. That's what we need. Michael Parks, he says, enjoy the channel, stay safe. Thank you, Michael. Douglas been playing plumber. That's a dirty job. Yeah, I do need to make it to Bugs Island at some point there, Sean. There's Brian Stivers. What's up, Brian? Let me scroll up. I got way behind in the chat first thing while I was getting baited up. Let me scroll up and hit a few up top here. Yeah, Brady, I've used liver before. I don't like it, though. It's hard to keep on the hook. It doesn't really catch much more in channel cats most of the time. There's Glen Meadows in the house. Yeah, we got fog already out here, self. We sure do. Yesterday, I fished yesterday morning and the fog didn't burn off till 10 o'clock or so. I don't think it's going to be as bad this morning. I really didn't see much fog until I got back here in this creek. So I think it's just because we had a cooler night and this creek cooled off a little more. It's 
it's got some extra fog going, but I think it'll burn off quick once the sun gets up. Zachary Blanco, Jeremy Cheese, he's caught so much more catfish following your channel and tips. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Oh, oh, let me turn the, we had another hit there on that worm. Daggone things work. Oh, now the middle rod got a little tap. It must be bluegill. Something small there, tapping them lines. That one on the right was getting a little tap tap a again. Now the one in the middle, a little tap. Line's getting tight on that one in the middle there. Yeah, I don't, there ain't no carp doing that. Yeah, we got some, we got some turtles or some bluegill doing us wrong out there, y'all. May have to rebate here in a few minutes. There's Chainsaw Man going hardcore up there behind me. Boy, it's a work day over here. Some of y'all tuning in to me to get an escape from work. And Chainsaw Man going to remind you that there's always work to be done. Daggum it. Let's see. Oh crap, I lost my spot again. There's Brian B, what's up? There's Virginian. He says, catch me a channel cat. And he really does have a cup. He got he stole me a pea cup at the NIH, y'all. <laughs> Sandra's asking, did I join the second chance? I don't know what you're talking about, Sandra. If you talk about our Survivor League, um, you had to have a second account made prior to the season started, to my knowledge. Anyway, unless you're talking about something else, I, I don't know. I don't know what you'd be talking about, Sandra. Good luck today, Douglas Mellon. Catch you a bunch, man. Want to be outdoors? Loon been booming. No, I ain't never been on the Ohio. I've been some places with Chainsaw Man though before and, and Chainsaw Man's in full effect out here today, buddy. I hope that ain't. They just broke something up there. We ought to go up there and film Chainsaw Man. That'd be more entertaining than watching these rods sat here and bounce around with turtles and bluegill right now. <laughs> we might see an episode of Axeman up here. That was a pretty good show back in the day. I don't know if they still make it or not, but it was on a history channel, I think. They'd filmed these guys cutting down trees and stuff up in the Pacific Northwest. It's funny, when I went up to the Pacific Northwest, I did a, a travel nurse contract up there years ago. I was up in Vancouver, Washington. It's right on the Washington, Oregon border. And uh, the kids up there, the woke people and stuff, they're doing their protests out in the street. They were all against them loggers and them, the ax men, you know, cutting down trees and stuff. They were like hardcore against it. Apparently it's a bad for the environment. They claim it's, I don't know. I didn't, you know, every time you'd walk down the street, to go to a restaurant or something, they were out there trying to give you a pamphlet or something. But anyway, who knew? Who knew? I didn't know. I didn't know it was such a big deal. I feel like I'm somewhat educated now. Hold on, y'all. I got a... My battery pack wasn't lit up. I guess I wasn't plugged in. That'd be helpful if I actually plugged the thing in. Oh, good. Mad go so he can barely hear a chainsaw, man. Well, good. I'm glad you can barely hear it because I feel like I got to talk louder to, to speak over it. There's Tommy Bounds and Gary Wormy Rich. Oh, Will Chilton, I was just talking about Oregon, Will. Maybe you can educate us all. So, Will, if you just tuned in, I was just talking about how 
when I was up there in Washington, people was protesting on the streets about the ax man, people cutting down trees and logging and stuff. Is that a big deal up there? Or is it just some college kids needing something to complain about? I'm very curious, Will. Now that we've got to talk, I hadn't thought about this in years, and now Chainsaw Man over here, it's on my mind. I'm curious. We got some time here, obviously, until the fish bite, so hook me up with some info, Will. Marksdale Boulevard. What new microphone did you, I ain't got a new one. This I've had this for a year or so. It's a Rode, Rode Wireless. Old man on the hill says he don't even hear it. Heck yeah, that's awesome, man, because it's loud out here. Jeremy T, I use whatever I get. I use shad when it's really cold, but the rest of the time, just whatever I can get. Uh, Brady Parish, I did end up getting that John boat. I don't really like it. I may end up selling it, but I did get one. I love the motor, love the trailer. don't really like the boat. That's what I baited with out here. <laughs> That's what I baited. I can, I can come out here and quickly bait a couple spots, and that's exactly what I, one of the things that I was wanting it for. Oh, Wesley Emery, four ninety nine. Thank you so much with a super sticker there. Appreciate you, Wesley. Glad to have you in here this morning. There's James Wilmoth. Yeah, it's foggy out here this morning. We didn't have no rain last night, but it did uh, did get cool enough. We're into the fall now here. It's still gonna be like 90 degrees today, but the nighttime temperatures are enough that we're getting a little, a little fog in the mornings. Well, I'm glad I'm the only one being annoyed to, annoyed to hell out here by these chainsaw men. I'm glad it ain't bothering you all. Old man on the hill was under the I-40 bridge. Like, yeah, it is loud under them bridges. Gosh dang it, y'all. We got something going to town on that middle rod there. I think that's a turtle or something. Turtle or blue that line will get tight and then it'll slack off. And it's just sitting there chewing on that thing, man. He gonna, he gonna get it here in a second. He gonna wish he hadn't, but he gonna get it. Uh, TX Rebel, I was using cattle cubes and horse feed. I put out two five gallon buckets. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set y'all up here a second. We're gonna, I'm just going to check my worm here. I may have a fish on here, actually. If I do, it's a small bluegill or something. No, I don't. Yeah, he got the worm. Oh, 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 lima bean down, y'all. Lima bean down. Lima bean down. That's the one, too, that we got to watch out We're getting spooled over here. Is he still on? Yeah, there he is. The lima bean goes down. Oh, buddy, he's a pulling. Fish number one, y'all. Fish number one. I'm going to dedicate this one to Bud Brutus, who hit me with about three super chats before I ever even got the stream going. Bud Brutus got me hooked up here first thing. So the first one goes to him. This may be a carp right here. I hope it is. Oh, that's a good one too. That's a good one right there, man. Nice. Nice. Got Bud Brutus a nice common here. Yes, sir. All right. Well, lima bean, 
getting it done, y'all. Old lima bean. Now I got to keep him out of this rope here. Let's see what I can do. Let me get the net. Let me put him between my legs here. Oh, come on now. Hang on. Hold on. There we go. There. Now we're in business. Come here, carp. Bud Brutus wants to see you one time. Oh, buddy, he jumped right in that net. Fish number one. I don't have quite as much space in this kayak to be landing big fish like this with the net. We're gonna make it work though, by gosh. Let me get this one. This rod's out of commission here. Let me get it out of the way. This is a nice one. Yeah, I didn't think this through. Maybe I should have brought the Hobie today. My trailer on the Hobie kayak is messed up. I took it out the other day. I thought I could fix the bunk while I was at the lake there. And then I realized it was gonna be a much bigger project than what I had initially. I got to replace the whole bunk. So I'm kind of out of commission in that kayak. And it has significantly more floor space, which I need for these carp. Could have brought the boat, I guess, but I ain't got a camera mount set up for it yet. Bear with me a second here, y'all. I gotta, we gotta get some hooks out of this fish. Okay, fishy, there we go. Hold yourself up here for Bud Brutus. Bud, that's a pretty nice common here to get the day started, man. I like his scale patterns on there. Tell, tell Bud up there, thank you, carp. Tell him one time. Fish ain't gonna tell you nothing, buddy. That fish says he ain't got nothing to say this morning. All right. Well, we got a couple rods to rebate here, y'all. Got a couple rods. I'm gonna get my fake corn. There it is. Had to get it out of the net. All I had done on that one, for those of you tuning in, we're trying a new bait today on one rod, at least to start. Hell, if it produces, we may put it on all of them. We got some uh, shout out Del Monte. They don't give me a discount or nothing, but Del Monte, that's the can I picked up. I got that can because it had a pop top lid. If them other companies want me buying their cans of lima beans, they best get a pop top lid. But I put a single bean on there with my fake corn. And I'm gonna put some pack bait on this feeder. And we're gonna be back in business on this and I'm gonna put another worm on that other rod. Yeah, I landed the carp in here today with my pedal drive. It's gonna be a little bit of a challenge wee bit catfish it ain't too bad because I, i'm just landing on my hand but these carp you pretty much need a net because there's nothing to grab on to and they don't calm down for you and once i bring that net in here to the floor things get a little little tight on space Well, it sounds like Chainsaw Man is right behind me over here. All right. That wasn't the best cast, but we're going with it. I'm gonna loosen that drag smidge. All right, y'all, skunk's out, man. I am happy about that. Now let's get a worm rig. Got 
Got that line all wrapped up around there. There we go. Okay. Let's get her worm. See if Chainsaw Man was worth a damn over here. He had already had this other rod rebaited for me while I was laying in that other. Chainsaw Man ain't much of a team player. He's over there just all self-absorbed, worrying about whatever he's working on today and, you know, just totally, totally not paying attention to what I'm doing over here. Now, I could have used some help just then, getting another line out. I kind of wonder since I'm rebaiting if I shouldn't just go ahead and, and reel that other one in too because it had gotten tapped a few times and it's quite possible they ripped the worm off of it too. I'll probably just go ahead and do it. Just do them all at once here. Yeah, I'm not liking this whole, I'm not liking this whole anchor set up here on this kayak. It's too, it wobbles too much. I don't like it. Oh, power pole. Power pole's on my SHIT list, y'all. And it ain't just that the, the power pole tore up, it's that, you know, they should have gone ahead and sent me a new one out right away. Don't dick around and wait on me to send the other one back because, you know, it takes a few days to get there, then a few days to get back, and too much downtime. I need stuff to work. Another thing too, while I'm on the topic, because a lot of you out there have Old Town kayaks. So I'm in my Old Town Big Water kayak today. And it is power pole ready, they call it. Because it has the inserts, you can just basically take the power pole mount, screw it into the kayak, no, no drilling needed, no nothing, right? And in theory, that's a good thing. But with this particular kayak here, the Big Water, I'm gonna show you here in a second. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Because if what happens in this kayak, I'm trying to get my words out. What happened in the other kayak the other night, if that happens in this one, we're in trouble. Uh, it, big trouble, because I ain't gonna have no quick release. There ain't no this kayak, this setup with the way they've, they've designed the power pole area, there's no safety mechanism. You're screwed. So I would caution you against, if you've got an Old Town Big Water or a Hobie Lynx or any of these kayaks that have this setup, I'd think twice because power pole sucks. And it ain't a matter of if your power pole is going to mess up, it's when your power pole is going to mess up. Okay, we rebaited y'all. We got all three rods, fresh bait, two worms, and a lima bean. A lima bean done got it done for us out here. All right, let me get the camera here. Let's see what all I missed in the chat. Any good conversations going on? 
There's Pontoon Jody. I seen her thing pop up there. What's up, Jody? Let's see. Let me scroll up here. Lord, we had some more super chats coming in while I was indisposed. Let's see. Okay, there's where I had left off. Okay, here's Will from Oregon, y'all. He was answering my question. Let me, he said it was a sad time in Oregon. It was the beginning of change for a lot of communities. I was asking him about the logging people up there, the ax men. Let's see. Lord, we almost whack a cat almost choked here while the rod was going down. Philip Holland hit me with a 20. He says, good morning and good luck today, man. Here's some money you can put towards the new bird feeder. Well, thank you, Philip Holland. I do got to get me a new bird feeder. The squirrels tore up my other one. They ripped it off my porch and broke the daggone thing. Thank you so much, Philip. I appreciate that, buddy. I like my birds. Philip knows I like my birds. <laughs> Jeremy T. using number six size hooks. James Shuey the skunk is officially out. Daggone right, buddy. Oh, there's Sandra with a 20. Said, glad the skunk is out. Me too, Sandra. Hang on, Sandra. Look at that. That rod was getting tapped right there. That middle one. I'm going to leave a, I'll leave a camera on the rods here for a second. Thank you for that super chat there, Sandra. Mark's Dale Boulevard with a super sticker. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that, buddy. Oh, Tadpole's turning 40 tomorrow, y'all. I'm with you, buddy. I turned 40 earlier this year. Happy birthday a day early. Hope you have a great day. There's carp and catfish, baits, tips, tricks, and techniques in the house. What's going on, y'all? Y'all, if you like carp fishing, be sure to check out his channel. He goes live just about every day of the week and catches some big carp. Brady, it's you, buddy. I got perfect cell phone service here. That's why I fish this spot on a live stream so much because I know I got cell phone service. James Carwell says, the biggest problem I've seen with power pole deals, you haven't used them a lot. One small malfunctioning and now a major problem. Oh yeah, I was going to go over the power pole deal here. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, let me just turn around and show you here for a second while we wait on the next fish. So, well, you can't hardly see. But on the Old Town kayak back here, that pole goes down goes down a hole in the middle of the kayak and that's a bad deal if you have a malfunction because well let me turn it back around there's a little lever here on the side if you get stuck for some reason your power dies whatever you pull that lever and the whole power pole contraption the motor will tilt forward and you can work yourself free well if that pole goes down a hole in the middle of the kayak you, that it don't work you can't you can't do that and you know if you get that thing locked down in that motor they ain't no getting it out and i'm gonna tell you i've had to do this twice now because power pole sucks i've had to i've gotten you know malfunction where i've had to turn around climb over the seat and get back there and try to finagle batteries and stuff and i'm gonna tell you it's a it's a bad deal now I was in my Hobie kayak both times, which that Hobie Pro Angler is huge. It's, you know, super stable. I can do that kind of thing in the Hobie. If something goes bad in this kayak, the old town, which is a little bit more narrow, a lot more fun to fish out of in my opinion, but not quite as stable. If I got to get back there and climb over seats and stuff, I'm probably going to end up in the water. Power pole is a bad deal. The design is sound on that thing. If you had a functioning power pole, but because I've had two problems here in two months that have required warranty repair, 
and so many other people, that ain't just me, there's been a lot of people, everybody I know that have had power pole have, have reached out to me and said, oh yeah, I had a problem too. And, and I'm like, it's an ongoing issue with them. So you probably, it's not if you're gonna have a problem, it's when you're gonna have a problem. And when you do, if you've got it set up on a kayak like this where the pole goes down in a hole in the kayak, good luck. Best of luck to you. So anyway, pissed off at power pole. Hopefully I'll be back in commission here soon on the other kayak. I felt like, you know, when I called them there last week, I felt like they should have sent the new one out right away. And they did not. And 30 damn dollars. That's another thing, too. This, I'm going to go on another rant here. Them power poles expensive, y'all. They're $600 for a power pole. And I got two because, you know, I didn't want all this sway back and forth. If you just got one power pole and the wind blows, you get a weather vaning effect or in current. And so today, because I ain't got the one, what I've done is I've took a dumbbell and tied off to the front of my kayak up here to try to prevent this sway. Well, I mean, that's, a, that's an expensive damn product for it to be tearing up, number one. But then when you gotta send it back for warranty repair shit, 30 damn dollars it cost to ship that thing back to them. And so factor all that in, you know, because you're gonna be doing some warranty repairs on them. Factor that into your cost. I'm liable to end up selling them things. If I had a better way of anchoring myself in this shallow water, it's just, when our water's up, there's no bank access. You know, you get, you get all these, oh, hang on. Good, we got a fish hitting here. Good. I need to get off my power pole rent. They're gonna dominate this whole stream. I'm sick of giving them advertisement. He hit that thing pretty good. That's on the bean. I think he's got it, folks. I think he's got it now. I'm gonna pick up on this lima bean here. Oh, lima bean, two fish now, the worm, not so much. This feels like a channel cat too. I think we just got us a channel cat on the lima bean. Here I am spending all this money on worms. I could have just been throwing beans out for a dollar a can. It is, it's a daggone channel cat, man. He gone too, good. I ain't had to land that thing. I didn't want to land that thing no way. I didn't want to touch him. Y'all know I hate them daggone channel cats now. At least that channel, the one thing that channel cat did for me was he got me off my power pole rant. So I don't want to give them any more advertising. I already give them a bunch of money and they messed up my last live stream. I don't want to give them any more. Let's put us another bean on. Lima bean getting it done. I thought, man, I come out here this morning, what are we? 53 minutes into this stream. I got baited up. We've, we've probably only had baits in the water for 45, 50 minutes. But I was full of optimism because I had baited and, you know, I tested it last night and caught some fish out here and, and right before dark. And I was like, I'm gonna come back out in the morning. We're gonna have a damn good live stream. We're gonna be catching a lot of fish. I'm gonna look like I know what the hell I'm doing. And thus far, if you're tuning in late, we got one carp and that small channel cat there. Let me get me some more bait on this thing. Again, y'all, this one too. Very, very small amount of line on here. A hard run, and we gotta, we gotta grab this rod quick, or we're gonna be spooled. I gotta, I gotta put some fresh line on that thing. I bought some line to re-spool. 
but I'm kind of wanting to give this this new Daiwa reel the college try here because I may end up getting me a couple more of them. And if I do that, then I don't need to re-spool these because I'd just be going to that anyway. But I wanted to get, I wanted to catch something big on them, see how they feel and whatnot. And I can't, I can't hardly catch anything big since I got that daggone thing. It's got the new, new gear jinx on it. Let's see what's going on in the chat here while I was, while I was dealing with all that. Old man on the hill says he made some manual poles. Yeah, I tried those last year. Some stakeout poles, but some of the places I fished was real rocky and you can't get them down in the ground. I took a hammer and was beating them things down to get them set and you end up working free after a few fish and you know if i'm live or you know i'm filming a video i ain't got time to be dealing with poles and stuff i can't be resetting all the time so i, I went with the power pole because you know in theory when they work good they're great i love them when they work like they're supposed to but getting them to work like they're supposed to all the time that's the challenge Let's see. Uh, Mick TR1 says the quality of live stream is amazing. This uh, good service today is what it is. I'm on my iPhone filming the stream, but I'm just, this spot has good cell phone service. Um, that's why I keep, that's why I keep coming back here. Daniel Durant, so they should give you free shipping. Yeah, they it's free to ship it back to me, but me getting the product to them, that's what I pay out the ass on. There's David Quick in the house. What's going on, David? Coop says, Tennessee over Florida, my lock of the week. Yeah. You know, I'm a big Tennessee fan, y'all, and I don't give gambling advice, but if I was going to give some gambling advice, I'd tell you to take Florida and the 10 points this weekend. Tennessee, and Flo first off, Florida usually finds a way to whip our ass. But we normally, even when we win, it's close games, and 10 points is a lot. We ain't played nobody. We've played Ball State and Akron and blew them out, which... You and I could have done that. And Pittsburgh, it took us to overtime to beat their backup quarterback. Now, I know Florida got beat by Kentucky. Kentucky's a pretty good team. And South Florida gave them some problems last week. But I think Florida could come in here and beat us. And if they don't, I think it could be close. And so I'd take, if I was a gambling man, I'd take Florida and the points. There's your gambling advice of the week, y'all. Hey, Josh Wagner. Yeah, I had Gary Warmerich. I had a fish jumping up behind me, flipping me the bird there. Apparently, we got some we got some shad flipping out here in this creek too. Let me turn the camera back around. Middle rod here. Something's after my worm. My line got tight and went slack and. May have to throw us another lima bean on there. Up, up. And now it went slack. Well, something knocked some slack in that line, didn't it? Up, up, up. Oh, he got it now. He got it now. We're in business. We're in business. Let's hope it ain't another channel cat. I see him out there on the surface, whatever he is. I don't know what this is. He ain't running hard like a carp, but he ain't rolling like a cat. It may be a buffalo, possibly. 
Let me try to get my other line up. Oh crap, he went over that other line. He's in it. No, he's under it. He's under it, I got lucky. I don't know what this is, y'all. I'm gonna dedicate this one to A Plus Homestead. Cause he hit me with a hundred dollar super chat there early on in the stream, if he's still watching. Oh, it is a carp, it's a smaller carp. Boy, he didn't act like it, did he? He did not act like a carp, that was a weird fight. I'll take it though. A plus homestead though, AJ there, hooked me up with a huge super chat and I wanna dedicate this fish to him. Let me set y'all up here. Let me turn that back around. Let me net this thing. He ain't ready to be netted apparently. Let have a little line on him. He wants to go back there. He, this fish trying to get back there on my power pole, y'all. He says he can fix it. He's going to get back there and investigate it. Come over here, carp. Come over here. He's under the kayak now. He's really looking at that power pole hard. He swears he can fix it. That one ain't broke, fish. Come on. Get over here now. There we go. Now we got him. We in business now. Let me set this back here. Come on in here. A plus homestead in there, having a hard time right now. Something's going on. And hopefully, fish, hopefully, him seeing your face, fish, will improve his day a little bit. If I was keeping bait today, that right there would be a good size one. Thank you again for the super chat, A plus homestead. Fish, tell, that, tell AJ thanks. He ain't telling you nothing, AJ. That fish ain't telling you nothing. I lost part of my net. I lost the handle on my net. My, my rubber handle's gone. <laughs> that fish got a souvenir, by gosh. That fish, he said he, he'd take anything and, and he, he got him a daggone net handle. I hope that fish wasn't going to try to sell that net handle on eBay. I don't think it's going to bring very much. Good try, fish. Oh, there it is. Huh. It was down in my rod holder. All right. I'll glue that thing on. Walmart went cheap with their glue, I guess. That's where I got that net at. Let's stick us another worm on there. Oh, big worm. All right, now, so now we, we two carp, and we, we hooked one channel cat. It don't count no way. But one carp on worm, and one on a lima bean, and the channel cat had eat the lima bean, too, so. We're gonna call it one to one because the channel cat don't count. Get me some more pack bait on. Well, we an hour into the stream and that's three bites at least. That's better than we did in the last live stream, wasn't it? What we get, two turtles and channel cat? Two channel cats, maybe? Hard times in that stream. This still ain't the bite that I was expecting today. I mean, hell, I was expecting to have rods going down constantly today with the baiting that I had done. No such luck as of yet. Okay. Whew. 
damn farmers over here. They could have worked any day of the week. They over here going to town on it today, man. Got the whole crew out here today. Let's see. A plus home, so he said he's still watching. Thank you again for that super chat, buddy. I wish I could have got you a bigger fish. We'll try to do better on the next one. Let me see. Uh, I scrolled up too far. Bear with me, y'all. I suck at being a live streamer. Russ St. Pierce's power pole called. They want you as a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, by gosh, you know, it, it, I mean, look, if I had a discount or something, I'd probably be a little bit more chill about it. But when I pay full price for something, and it's a lousy product, I'm going to voice it, by God. Rocky Harris in the house. There's Mike Barron. What's up, Mike? Gordon Douglas hit me with a 10 spot. He says, I know you hate those channels, but a couple of trips past, we caught one you would like to have on camera. It was a channel flathead crossbreed. It was unique. I didn't even know such a thing existed, Gordon. That may, that may have been a one of a kind deal. Thank you for that super chat, though. That's nice of you. Jay Asbill from Eastern Oklahoma. He's from the east side. Well, we got our lines back out here. Waiting on the next one to go down here. We're waiting on the next one, y'all. People that's in here now, you want my face or you want the pole view? Y'all tell me. We can. There's Ariel Underwood. It says, hey, from Northeast Arkansas. Well, good morning, Ariel. There's Chris Vitale. Daniel Durant says both. Pontoon Jody still in the house. Lord Scott Feagan just hit me with a 10 spot, no comment. John says face till we get a fish. All right, face it is. John likes my face and I can't blame him. It's a nice looking face. I was looking for Scott Feagan to pop up with a comment there, but just supporting the channel. I appreciate the support, Scott. These farmers over here yelling. I don't know if that's coming on the microphone. They over here hollering. I guess they want to be part of the show. Let's just put them on camera then. They want to holler and carry on. We'll just put them on the show. I don't even know what the hell they're doing. That's a bucket right there. Hell, they might be building another house down here. God knows we needed more houses here along the riverbank in East Tennessee. Always something, man. You can't fish in peace no more. No matter where you go, what time of the day, you can't fish in peace. Can't do it. There's Lacey Gearhart up early in Arizona. Yeah, it is early for you. I went live here around 7.30-ish, so I guess that'd be 4.30 or 5.30 y'all's time. Gary Wormy Rich, he's, he's listening. I'm background noise to Gary. That's what I like to hear. He's boosting my watch time, y'all. Damn it. Yeah, getting a few. Ah, so, you know, I hate people, man. You know, if I wanted to be social with people, obviously I'm being social here with you. 
But when I see somebody out fishing, out on the water, out on a bank or something, I don't say nothing unless they say something to me because, you know, I assume that maybe they want some private time, you know. If, if they wanted to talk and, and chit-chat, they'd go to a ice cream social or a bar mitzvah or whatever the hell it is people do when when they want to be social you know i i, I just don't i don't i don't mess with people but these we're gonna be all damn day we're gonna be listening to these guys over here i guarantee you next time we catch a fish they'll probably be walking over here trying to get on the show we're about to get one right here i think left rod Oh, Scott says, sorry, no comment then. Thank you for taking me fishing. Well, thank you, Scott. I appreciate you tuning in today. I hate that we got all this company out here. Well, he'd hit it. There's Paul Boyd. Aaron McLaughlin, it's been slow thus far. A couple carp and a small channel bite. There's Ted, he's heading to work. Have a good day, buddy. Whitney McChrystal said, you never know, your kind words make someone's day. It'd make my day if Chainsaw Man over here would get the hell on. I ain't got no kind words for Chainsaw Man. Look at him over there. They better not pop them trees down here in the water behind me. I guarantee them to you they building a house or something down here. Like I said, we need more houses here on the riverbank. Everybody during the pandemic started moving south, you know, because they didn't have to go to work no more. They could work from home and stuff. And so all them northerners and stuff, they all started coming down here in Tennessee because we got a great state. Climate's good, gas cheap, electricity cheap, no proper, or, uh, no state income tax. It's the place to be. These guys are gonna piss me off, man. It's gonna just, it's driving me insane. They're right here working right here where I'm at. It's always something, man, always. I hope I all, it's, it's loud in my ear. I feel like I'm having to yell to talk to y'all. I hope it's fine on the microphone. I was going to stay live three or four hours today. We may wrap this up early. These people are going to piss me off. It's going to ruin the stream for everybody. And if I go out of this creek, I'll go down river, I ain't got service. And moving in this creek ain't going to help us none because... We're still going to be hearing this. Old man on the hill says some people got to work for a living. Not everyone can fish. Now, I get what you're saying, old man on the hill. But good hell, I mean, I'll come out here to try to be in the middle of nowhere. What are the odds they're going to be doing chainsawing right here by the damn bank right behind me? What are the freaking odds? So I get what you're saying, old man on the hill. But at the same time, I don't give a shit right now. So how about that? God dang it. Anyway, old man on the hill is going to push a trigger on me. That's what he about to do. He about to, he about to trigger me. What's up, Anthony Clifford? Good thing I got the fancy microphone today, I'll tell you that. If y'all had to hear what I'm hearing, You'd be tuning out. We need some fish to come along is what we need. A good fish to come along distract us. I hope they don't start splashing the water with them trees. If they do that, any fish we do have in here will spook. Yeah, I don't know, John Shackelford. We need a fish to come along. I thought it'd be lights out here. Uh, I, I thought it would be 
I thought it would be just on fire this morning with me having baited this area, but nothing, nothing much happening so far. Just a couple carp and a small channel cap. Edward Costello, you gonna piss me off too. Nothing pisses me off more than people telling me how I should think, feel, and act. I got a right to be a, have emotions the same as anybody else, so don't tell me how I'm gonna think, feel, and act or your ass gonna be gone too. I got no problem blocking people. Y'all know it. So tread lightly. There's Callie. So set an alarm just so I can make sure to donate my 20 gonna listen until I fall back to sleep. Good luck. Well, good luck going back to sleep with chainsaw noise here. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be hard to sleep through this. This noise would wake the dead. <laughs> Great outdoors, the hair rigs, it don't really set the hook by itself necessarily. But the hair rigs I've found beneficial because it gets the carp in the bottom lip most of the time. Oh, we may be about to reel one in. That rod got hit pretty good right there, that middle one. But the hair rigs get them carp in the bottom lip, which is the best place to hook them. That helps you, that helps you land more of them. If you get them in the side of the mouth, their mouths are so soft, you often rip that hook out. Something hit that worm. He didn't get the hook though. But these hooks, these carp hooks are so sharp, you usually get a, a pretty good hook set. When they suck that hook in, it normally hooks them. But that's just part of the design of the, of the hook. Clinton Jesus, let's turn it into experiment. Do you catch more carp with chainsaws and, and limas? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got, we, we got some people getting timed out here. I, I've struck a chord with some people today, good. The nice thing about chainsaw, is people coming up here, is when I get pissed off and start ranting on people, when I get pissed off and start ranting on people, it exposes the people out there who are not really supportive of me, the haters. And when they pop up, then I start, then I start just, I weed through people. We get down to the core audience, the people who are my true community, the people I wanna hang out with and go fishing with because they're like-minded people like me. Random people who don't really like me, don't really support me, why do I want them watching? Because I give a lot of tips and stuff. You know, I try to help people in my videos. I don't want to help people that I don't like. And so I find out who I don't like oftentimes when I go on these rants. Lord Vivi Saldana. Well, Vivi got his message deleted, but he'd hit me with 1999. He's from West Texas. Thank you, Vivi. Yeah, Robster, I got the fancy microphone, but it's loud here. I mean, it's literally right behind me. Pontoon Jody says, sorry, Vivi. I don't know what Vivi done. Normally, he's, normally Vivi's on my side, but I don't know. I may have struck a chord with him with Chainsaw Man comments. Lee Rose, Lee Rose loves my rants. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. There's one on the worm and the, and the big reel here, the new reel. Let's give Chainsaw Man a show over here. He's, he's ruining our day out here. We'll sit here and catch a fish in front of him. Maybe we can ruin his day. This is a nice pull right here. This feels good. You know, if I had my dual power pole set up, it'd be a hell of a lot easier to move. But with me having to set this anchor down here in front, 
it's a lot bigger hassle to do move. Oh, here goes this one. I got a double. I'm doubled, y'all. I'm doubled. That one's a pulling too, man. I'm gonna deal with the one in the hand. I'm gonna deal with the one in the hand right now. Goodness gracious. If this rod on the left goes down, we'll have to grab it because it ain't got much line on the reel. That other one over there, I think is going to be okay. My new reel here has a lot more line capacity. This feels like pretty good fish. Oh yeah, that's a nice common right there. Nice common. I'm gonna get him over here, get him closer, and we'll, and we'll pick up on the other one. That's a nice common right there, man. Nice common. All right. Let me set this. We're gonna set this one over here. I'm gonna put him over here on this side. Okay, now let's see if this is still on here, y'all. Oh yeah, we're doubled. We're doubled. I think this might be another carp too. Maybe we finally got them. It's, it's fitting we're gonna get them feeding here good now that the work crew showed up. The bite will really turn on. We'll see if we can land this one on this side of the kayak. He swam over my other line, but I don't think he's got in it yet. Hopefully he went right over the top of it. Yeah, this is working perfect right here. He went over my other line, he didn't get in it. Yeah, that's another carp right here. That's another pretty good one too. I ain't even gonna try to talk cause damn chainsaw man. Let's go ahead and land this one first. I'm gonna set y'all back up here while we do some fish landing. Since this one's in the hand, I'm gonna try to land him first. I can't even hear myself think it's so loud. You know, all these people getting pissy with me because I'm pissed at them. They out here doing their job. My work day don't interfere with them. What I'm doing don't bother them at all. But what they're doing does bother me. It does affect my ability to come out here. And yeah, I'm fishing, but I'm also working. This is what I do for a living. So people getting pissy with me. Every single person that's gotten pissy with me, well, I ain't going to tell them what I was thinking. By gosh, we got a nice fish here. This is a nice one. I'm gonna dedicate this into Ed in Oklahoma. He's under the welding hood right now. He hit me with a big super chat earlier and this is a big fish, man. This is a big one. Big carp. No, oh, oh, easy, easy carp. I'll be flopping around. Ain't got a lot of room in here for you to flop in this kayak. All right, both of them was on the worms, y'all. On the worm rods. All right, we got that out of the way. Let me set my pliers up there. Let's hold Ed's fish up, y'all. This is a good one, man. This is a good one right here. Look at that, man. 
Nice. Ed from Oklahoma, thank you for the super chat, man. Patton's for you, buddy. Nice, man. Awesome. Get out of there, buddy. Woo! That was a good fish. We still got our other one over here we got to land, too. Nice. I kind of feel like... Yeah, I'll go ahead and land this one. I thought maybe for a second there I'd go ahead and rebait, cast the other one out. And now... And, uh, but I'll just do them both at once here. Get in that net. Yeah, that's another good one, man. Oh, crap. This is another good fish right here. Oh, buddy. Oh, easy, easy, buddy, easy. Whoo! This one's throwing my fake corn off. I think. Yeah, he's throwing my fake corn off right here. We'll just be going worm only on this one here for the time being. Oh, oh, easy. Oh, he was hooked good, man. This one, this one got hooked right in the bone of that bottom lip. Oh, he was not coming free, man. Oh, I got another one. I'm triple. I'm gonna got one on the lima bean here, y'all. I can't get this dang hook. There it come. I think I was getting that hook out. I had one hit the lima bean. Let me hold this one up. I'm a, I want to dedicate this one right here. It's another good one, man. Also another real good carp. I'm gonna dedicate this into my moderators who's deleting and blocking all them assholes that wanna tell me how I need to think, feel, and act. So shout out to my moderators. I appreciate you all. Get out of here, carp. That other rod got hit. I don't know that he got it or not. Let me set this, let me set this out of the way. I gotta wash my hands off here, y'all. That was fun. I couldn't hear myself think as I was reeling them in, but that was fun. We're gonna check this other rod. Yeah, he's on there. He's on there, lima bean got each, y'all. Oh no, I just got broke off. No, there he is. I thought I was broke off. I must have got wrapped in something. Oh, he come off. No, there he goes. Well, look at him go. Holy cow, he's a he's a burning man. That fish shot off like a rocket. Holy cow, that fish was burning. Oh man. I this has gotta be a carp. He, he felt like he broke me off over here. He must have had me wrapped in like a branch or something. And I guess when the branch give away or the twig or whatever, it felt like he had broke me off, but then he just shot off to the right and kept going. I need to get this other rod out of the way here before I land this one. This, it feels like a good one too. That was two good carp, and now this one. Just boom, boom, boom. We may have finally got them here. Finally got them going here. Oh, this one's gonna get me in this line here. I gotta, let me get this one out of the way. Let me set that out of the way there. Oh, he's in that rope up here. He's in the rope. Oh, now he's got my other line there. I just moved it to get out of the way. Now I'm in it. That's a mess. That's exactly what I was trying to avoid, and I've done it. <laughs> he 
He has run laps around that rope there on the dumbbell. Again, I'm doing this setup today because power pole is garbage. Power pole's hot garbage, and so I've had to do this. And now, exactly what I was fearful was gonna happen has happened. He's run laps around this rope. This one, you know, this one was running like a lightning. He's not as big, he's not as big as them other two. Well, that's a surprise. This one here, man, he just keeps circling. Let me take the camera here and show you. Look at this, he's run circles around that damn rope. <laughs> when it rains, it pours, y'all. I'm gonna just release this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just release this one down here. I ain't gonna be able to, it'll be a whole lot easier to unwrap this without the fish on the line. Chainsaw man, assholes in the comment box, fish tangling me all to hell. When it rains, it pours y'all, but we're catching some fish. That's the most important. Let me get a hold of this thing. Come here, buddy. Come here now, come here, come here, come here, come here, hey, come here. It's an eight to lima bean, y'all. There we go. All right, he's gone. I, I had to release that like that because if I didn't, I'd have been in bad shape. Hey, it's got that. I'm out of commission. I'm out of commission a minute, y'all. I'll tell you what. I got one rod that ain't a total SHIT show. Let me get it cast back out. And we can wait on the next fish to bite while I get some lines untangled. Okay, this one here, that fish, he, he threw the fake corn off. It's got the hook bent too. Well, that fish right there, man, he, he done some work on that hook. I'm gonna have to replace that hook, but we're gonna catch another fish. I'm gonna straighten it back out a little bit. That'll work. That'll get us through the through the day here. Whew. I mean, if I got anybody left still watching, a few hundred people. I don't know how y'all can sit through this. It's one thing for me, because I'm at least getting to reel in a fish or two. Yeah, that finished off that can of worms. But I couldn't sit there and listen to somebody else's string doing this. Worm, the big worm. Bear with me, y'all, bear with me. I'll get back to the chat box here in a minute. If people still telling me how to think, feel, and act, I may not want to get back to that chat box. We'll get this and I don't think, I'll move that other rod to try to keep it from getting all wrapped up and I'll be damned if I didn't do it to myself. But I don't think it's tangled that bad. The one around the rope here will be the one that's the issue. All right, we got one line back out. We got one line, y'all. You know? 
<clears throat> I think that rod just got hit. I just cast it back out. I think it just got hit. Well, let's try to get this undone right fast before the next one comes along. I've got a mess here, y'all. I've got an absolute mess. When it rains, it pours. When it rains, it pours, y'all. What are the odds? What are the odds these guys will be working today? The one damn creek around here I got cell phone service in. And today's their work day. And I hate that they're cutting down these trees because the sun comes up over here behind the hill and so I can use these trees for shade. Well, I gotta... Well, I got a mess. I might have to end up cutting this. I didn't think it was gonna be that bad, but... Bear with me, y'all. I'll get y'all talk amongst yourselves in that chat. Hopefully, we hopefully my moderators will have weeded out all the assholes by the time I get back. I, I hope I lose at least 50 subscribers today. I got 150. I crossed the 150,000 mark the other night. That tells me I got too many damn subscribers. I don't need that many. I need, I need about a thousand of you that are good quality people. That's what I need. Okay, all right, all right, we're making progress on it here. Okay, all right. There's that, oh. Well, so I thought. When you woke up this morning and tuned on my live stream, did you ever think that you'd just be sitting here watching me pick out tangles? <laughs> Is this how you thought you'd spend your morning when you woke up today? We about got it licked now, though. We about got it licked. Maybe. I got one more. Okay. We about got it. I promise this time. This time I really mean it. We about got it. Yeah. I don't know about you all, but whenever I get out of Tangle, I do feel like I've accomplished something. I just, Lord, I, I had it undone and now I've just... I got it. I had it. I did it again with the hair on that fake corn. <laughs> okay. What more could I possibly have tangled here? I don't even know how this happens. Like, how does it? How do I screw up this? I had this part undone. All you can do is laugh at it. You gotta laugh or cry. I'd rather just I'd rather laugh. Okay. We got that one. Let's get it cast back up. Let's get this one cast back up. We're gonna get this one back out, and I gotta get this one last rod here unwrapped from around the my anchor rope here. Again, I'm using the anchor rope because power pole sucks. In case, I, in case you didn't get to the feeling there from my previous rant. Okay. 
I don't know if we just had some carp work through, like a pod of them. Sometimes they'll swim in packs or if just got them out there feeding again, you know, from where I threw all that bait out. I don't know how long it takes them to, to eat, you know, a big bucket of bait. I don't know enough about them. I'd say they probably go through it pretty quick. There's that one. Now let's see if I can work this free. This one here is gonna be more of a, a challenge right here because it's around the anchor rope. Bear with me y'all. Y'all talk amongst yourselves. I think I might have just got it. I think I might have. After all that, I got it untangled, then I stuck that, hope, that hook in the rope. There we go. After all that, I think we about back in business, y'all. What an ordeal. What an ordeal. But hey, we got three more fish, by gosh. We got us a few. That's the goal of fishing is to catch fish. Tangles happen, unfortunately. Let's put us another, another worm. Two with the worm, one with the lima bean. What the hell are these guys doing? I guess they got a, a shredder out here too. Chainsaws and shredders. All right, here we go. All right, all three rods back in business. Okay. Well, half hour later, I'm back of the comment box. <laughs> Nothing like doing a live stream and not interacting with the people you live with, right? Okay, let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. Let me scroll up here. Come on, find more. Oh, 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 just like that. Just like that. Let's reel in another one. Woo! We hooked up again, y'all. I'll get to the chat box in a minute. Bite's turning on now. It's took an hour, but we turning it on now. 
This is another carp here. He's making a good run. This is all my fancy reel here. I kind of like this reel. You know, the handle sticks out farther too. I kind of like that about it. I might pick me up a couple more of these. I hope he don't get over and out of the line. Come on, Phil. He's coming right toward that other line, man. He swam over, and now he's kind of hovering over there. He's probably trying to find it so he can do some circles around it. By gosh, we're getting bit, though, ain't we? It just took a little while to get going. But now they, they, they here, they turned on now. Come on, fish. He's went over that line again, but I don't think he got in it. Now that I've told him he ain't in it, he'll probably, he'll probably swim back over there and try to do it again. Woo! Well, we're getting bit at least. I'm gonna tighten that line up there. Getting close. I don't want him getting in it here last second. Yeah, that's another common right there. I believe it's gonna be another good one too. These things fight like the dickens, man. They ain't no quit on them, buddy. They just keep fighting. They keep pulling. Yeah, that's another, that's another common. I was hoping we might see a mirror carp in here at some point. That would be awesome. I've caught six this year. And it's been a while. I feel like I'm due for another one. Let's go this side. At the risk of getting this one wrapped around this rope over here, let's, let's do it. Let's bring him around this way and we'll get him. Yeah, a nice one right there. I'll find somebody here in the super chat to dedicate this one to here in a second. I know I'm way behind in the chat. We'll get caught up directly. Right now, it's nice to catch a fish, distract myself from how bad I hate these people behind me over here. Okay. That's a good one, man. That one right there. Got some weight on him. Whoo. Let's see. Let me scroll up here. The last one I see here is Brian Settles with a super sticker so brian you're gonna get you a fish dedicated to you my pliers at this is the one that was on the crooked hook that had gotten bent and no fake corn on the hair because it got ripped off we still made it work here let me hold you up here fish you're good man Brian Suttles, there you go, man. That's another good one, buddy. Got old hump on his head right there, old knot head. Woo! He's out. Audi 5000, as the kids used to say. All right. They biting good now, y'all. They biting good now. We got them turned on. Now that the full work crew's over here behind me, making as much noise as possible, we got the fish feeding good. That first hour when we had some peace and quiet, the fish wasn't having nothing of it. But now, now we got them turned on and going. Let's put us another worm out there. I kind of want, you know what? Since I'm so far behind in the chat, let's do this. Because I really, we've caught, we caught two fish now on the lima beans. Let's put another lima bean on this one. Just to experiment. Since we got them in here and feeding, let's see if we can get them to eat these beans. 
So now we're gonna have two with the lima bean and one, the one on the far right over here has got the worm. I like catching me some carp, y'all. I especially like it when you can get them that size and bigger and get them one after another. You know, there's been some days this year, especially the days after I've baited like I have here, where you go home and your arm's tired because you've reeled in so many fish. I like that. Those are good days. Even if you can't fish in peace and quiet, at least you can catch some fish. No, you, what you don't want to have is a day where you don't get peace and quiet and not catch any fish. Because then you just, you feel like you got double whammied. All right, I'm gonna get back to the chat now. We got all our lines out. Hopefully Chainsaw Man will crank back up. Yeah, there he is, right on cue. <laughs> right on cue, I knew it got too quiet. Let me scroll up here. I got way far behind. Let's see. Uh, I want to make sure I didn't miss any super chats. I may have, I scrolled all the way to the top. These chats fall off after a little while. If I miss anybody's super chat from way back, I apologize. The next one I see here, let me scroll down. The next one I see is Vivi Saldana. So if there was one before that, I apologize. My screen's gone as far as I can go. He says, hello there, buddy. I don't know why I got my comment deleted. All I said was good morning, that my vacation was over. I always support you 100%. Hello to West Texas. Yeah, sorry about that, Vivi. I don't know why that happened. You've always had my back and everything, so I'm surprised you got deleted there. I apologize, Vivi. But shout out to West Texas. Hope you're safe wherever you're at today. He's a trucker, y'all. He's, he's on the road all the time. So I hope you're doing good wherever you're at, Vivi. Say Wesley Emery 999. He says, "Listen, while it worked, glad I finally caught the live stream. Hope you have a great day." Well, thank you, Wesley. I appreciate you making me part of your work day, man. I hope your day goes good. Let's see. Let me scroll down, Mark Francis with some Canadian money super sticker. Thank you, Mark. All that, even them Canadian, don't put Canadian quarters in American machines. That's a fact for you. But I appreciate Canadian money all the same, Mark. Thank you so much. Don't, don't do them Canadian quarters though. There was Brian Suttles. We dedicated the fish to him. Thank you for that super chat, Brian. Warrior 2 Alpha with a 10 spot. He says, appreciate the content you're putting out. Tight lines and calm seas. Well, thank you, Warrior 2 Alpha. I'd rather have loose lines, rough seas, and a quiet background right now. I'd trade it all for a quiet background. We can't get that though. But thank you for the super chat. There's Penny in Kentucky in the house. Old Tim Zazinski. Outdoors Addiction, 499. He says, for more lima beans. Heck yeah. Thank you, Outdoor Addiction. 
Old Del Monte's gonna be making some money off me after today, by gosh. <laughs> No, Tim, I, I got them tiger nuts in my other kayak. They're so damn hard. I tried to put them on last time and cracked them. So I got I got to figure out how to how to put the things on. Well, thank you, Billy Wilder. Well, Tim Zazinski, he said he played pool all night with one Canadian corner at the bar. He said, push it in. It came back out every time. That's pretty damn smart, Tim. Uh, that's one of the best ideas I've heard. We used to go play pool over there at the uh, Oak Ridge Bowling Alley over there. They had them quarter quarter machine pool tables. We'd play over there some. Looking back on it, I wish I'd have had me some Canadian quarters in. I'd saved a lot of money. There's Michael Jacobs from Peoria, Arizona. Let me scroll up here. I missed a bunch of comments, y'all. I got behind when I got all tangled up and caught all them fish and stuff. We had a lot going on. Not as much as these guys over here got going on. What are the odds, though, man? What are the odds? I got one creek out here with cell phone service where I know I can catch some fish. What are the odds they'd be cutting down all the trees in it today? Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. Let me scroll down here. We got, where's the damn button at? There it is. Left rod was getting hit. I was scrolling down looking for the button and it's at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> I'm so discombobulated right now, y'all. Between the chainsaws and the excitement from catching the fish we just got, I can't function. I thought that left rod was going to go down. If you just tune in, these left, this one and this one's got lima beans. This one over here's got a worm. The lima bean getting it done, but the worm's caught the biggest fish so far. Fishing from scratch, said he's been adding fruit cocktail to his pack bait. With great success. That's good info right there. There's Catfish Club member Russell Smith. Yeah, Gary said he can hear them on here too. There's Tony Jessen. Yeah, these guys, man, they ruining my work day. I ain't doing shit to their work day, but they ruining mine. Somebody's probably building a house here. They're cutting down these trees. They're probably putting in a house or something right here. See all these geese coming right here? Whoever hired these ax men to cut down these trees, I hope these geese get all over their porch deck and crap all over everything. That's what I'm wishing on them. Them geese get down here and crap on everybody's yards. I hope they wreak havoc on these people that hired the ax men. I hope they don't crap on my head. They're right above me right now. Something hit right there. That'd be, boy, what a, what a way to top off the day is if I got crapped on. <laughs> boy, wouldn't that be something? If I get crapped on, y'all, we end in the damn stream. Is this time to go home? If that happens, it's over. I'm going to go home and hunker down the rest of the day. <laughs> Tiffany said your mic works really well considering the chains. Back I'm glad it's background noise to you. I mean, I feel like I'm having to yell to compensate for it. They've taken over the whole show. People watching this on the playback is going to be... I ain't going to get any views on the playback because people are going to click off. And I can't blame them for it. Uh, Brian, yeah, the new pack bait sinkers are down in the video description. Lawn Link says they follow me. They do. Everywhere I go, I got lawnmower man, leaf blower, chainsaw. Today we got stump grinder back here. 
Man, I can't catch a break with these guys. Yeah, Brady, that's at least two chainsaws now. <laughs> a creepy pasta poet, the lima beans is a new one on me too. I've had people tell me to use various beans for buffalo. And so I went to Walmart last night to get some worms and I went to see if they had any panko. And while I was there, I was like, let me just pick me up a random can of beans. And so I, they had some of these pop top lids with a small can of lima beans. And so I thought, let's try it out today. Let's put it on one rod. And the lima beans have gotten eaten at least twice now that I can remember. And so now I'll put it on a second rod. We'll give a little while, and if they're not getting hit, we'll switch it out, put another worm on one of them rods. But so far, so far, so good. I would I ain't caught no buffalo out here this morning, though. We got all carp and had one small channel cat come off at the kayak, which is fine. I'd just assume not land a channel cat. But no buffalo. Want to be outdoors, says Justin. When do you usually use that fly? You have the link in your description. Well, want to be outdoors apparently ain't been watching any of my videos because I've been rocking that fly for the last few months. <laughs> All my catfish videos, I've been rocking that fly. I don't know where the hell he's been, but when I'm catfishing, want to be outdoors. Chad Smith says, people say they don't poop when they fly. Well, yeah, people say that, but I saw some hit right over here beside me. <laughs> Ed from Oklahoma is watching you struggle with lines is nostalgic. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. It happens, buddy. And when you live, you can't edit it out when you live. You just got to roll with it. Thank you for that super chat, Ed. Lynn says her husband Will got crapped on by geese once and caught a lot of fish afterwards. <laughs> if I get crapped on, I ain't sticking around to catch any more fish. I'm going to the house. <laughs> James says, the rod, the carp knocked the corn off. Try a bean and worm. I don't know if I could fit them both on there since I got to run that hook through. John Donahue's been using the one inch gulp with a lot of success. That's awesome. Fishing from scratch, cleaned out ollies. I don't blame you, man. You find some panko anymore, you got to grab it because it don't last long. Riley Taylor been a member for 12 months since I almost broke my ankle and I'm walking in a boot after taking a step down on a small platform. I was watching one of your videos, so I'm blaming you. <laughs> so just kidding, stay safe out there. Well, thank you for staying a member so long, Riley. I hope you heal up quick. I'm glad you almost broke it and didn't fully break it. At least there'll be a quicker recovery for you. Brian said Justin's having a rough morning. <laughs> yeah. It could be far worse. But people like this are just, you know, it takes away from the live stream. It takes away from what I'm doing. It takes away from y'all's enjoyment. And that's why I hate the most about it. And being I'm in a kayak, you know, I can't just pull up anchor and motor down river till we got more cell phone service. You know, I, I can't go anywhere quickly. So it's not like I can just put y'all on hold for two minutes. If I move, you know, it's, we're a 30 minute run to move and I've baited this area. So this is going to be our best bite right now because I've thrown out so much bait here the last couple days. And for these guys to show up here today, it's just bad timing, bad luck, man. We are getting some fish though. Hopefully the, the fancy microphone, hopefully it's earning its money today. So I've made worse videos. Y'all see my, the worst video I've ever made is coming out Saturday. It's a bicycle video. Yeah, I've been taking these bicycles left and right. 
They keep sending them to me. I had another one show up yesterday. It's easy money. Well, I took a, my bicycle to the dam, and I couldn't hardly catch anything over there. It's going to be the worst video I've ever put out, but I was under the gun. I had to get this video done, so it's coming out Saturday. That's the worst video I've ever made, though. This is probably going to go down as the second worst video I've ever made, and there's probably a tie for third with every other video I've ever put out. So there you go. It's going to be two bad videos this week. i got a catfish video coming out tomorrow, though. Marshawn says he's, he watches for my one-liners. Might be some one-liners with some cuss words if these guys don't go on lunch break soon. There's my man Bud back with 1999. I swear he's been to Las Vegas and hit the jackpot. He said, this is very entertaining. Never laugh so hard watching you, Justin. Keep giving them hell. <laughs> Thank you, Bud. I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoying it, Bud. It could be worse. It could be worse, but... Boy, it could be a lot better, too. Where did you go on vacation at, bud? I want to know. Because I swear, you've hit me with so many super chats today. I feel like I feel like you've hit a jackpot in Vegas. You've been to Vegas or Tunica, Mississippi one. I don't know which. Riley said he sprayed his ATFL tendon pretty good. Last Wednesday, he started PT, though. I'm glad your PT's going good. Hopefully them therapists will get you back. Oh, 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 Riley. We got one here, Riley. Hang on. Oh, no. He come off. He come off there. He doubled the rod and took the worm. Is that the one on the crooked hook? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one that I got the messed up hook on. I bent it getting it out of that other fish and then I threw it out again anyway and I caught that other fish, but that one, I'm wondering if we didn't lose that fish because of the hook. I'm still gonna reuse it. I've had so much downtime because of the line tangles and stuff. I don't wanna, I don't wanna take time to retie. I thought we were really going to start tearing them up there. We got all them carp real quick. We must have just had a pod of them work through. Back when I was bow fishing and stuff and I, I had my boat with the lice on, I, I'd oftentimes come across like a school of carp, like five, six fish just all swimming together, like a little, like a little family, like a little pod. And I bet that's what happened when we got them four fish there real quick. They were just probably swimming through together. Thankfully, we've only got one fish in this rope up here. I was really worried about it. But it's, it's overall, I will say this about the rope and the, and the dumbbell. It's done a pretty good job with these fish, especially that one that was over here and then it ran to the right. Like the kayak didn't do a lot of spinning. It's, it's held me in place. That's a 15 pound dumbbell and then the power pole in the back. So. It's done a pretty good job. That sun has peeked over the tree now. I guess these fellas over here behind me, they are gonna be cutting down all these trees. I won't have shade no more when we come out here on future trips. But that sun's got through the trees now. I hope we don't, I hope we don't overheat or anything. It's supposed to be, I think, around 90 today. We got one more week of summer here. Next week it's gonna be in the 70s for highs and 50s for lows, so it's gonna be a cooling down big time.
Let's see. Derek Parker said chainsaw talks better than nasty cooter talk. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. No, John, I still ain't tried the strawberries, but it's on the to-do list. There's Anthony Clifford said it makes a, makes for a lot of fun for me remembering some of my fishing trips. <laughs> I guess he's he's had some trips with some tangles too. <laughs> Lynn says, what gets me is that some people don't see that this is your job. They see, oh, Justin fishes all the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's the part that people don't see. I mean, yeah, I'm fishing, and it's the best job ever. I mean, coming out and going fishing and whatnot. I'm very fortunate to be able to do this, but, you know, filming, I don't get paid to go fishing. I get paid to film and make fishing videos. That's the job, and so... When I have GoPro problems and whatnot, that's very frustrating. When I come out on days like this and people are interfering with my ability to make a video, that's very frustrating because that's, you know, live stream, I've done really well on here today regardless, but, you know, on a normal video, if I was out here filming a normal video today, I would have probably just scrapped the, the video, you know, and, and that's, that's a day's pay lost. You know, there ain't no sick time on YouTube. There ain't no... You ain't, you ain't accumulating vacation time. So, yeah, that's just part of it. But, yeah, I get that all the time. People say, oh, you get to go fishing for a living. No, I get, I go, I make fishing videos for a living. <laughs> it's still the best job ever, but there's a big difference. Let's see, I lost my spot again. Oh. Brian Stiver said, Justin, this will be the second worst. The first worst has got to be absolutely hilarious based on this one. Now we got helicopters going by. I give up, man. I give up. I give up. It ain't meant to be today. <laughs> The chainsaw slack off for a minute and here comes a damn helicopter. <laughs> I, it, uh, I talked about this once upon a time in a video that I felt like there was an app on people's phones. And when I come into their area, it sent off a signal to their phone like an alarm that says go outside and make as much noise as possible. Because there's no way that all this is just coincidence. It can't be. It cannot just be coincidence. It has to be planned. It's like a government conspiracy. I, I'm on the Truman Show or something. Like My whole life is a reality show. I'm being watched all the time. And I just don't know about it. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> oh, you can't make this stuff up. Where'd that other Warrior 2 Alpha hit me with a 50? My gosh, thank you, Warrior 2. Didn't leave a comment with it. But thank you so much, man. That's another big one. Let's see if he left a comment down there under it. No comment under it. Well, thank you, though, Warrior 2 Alpha. I, I really appreciate that, man. Um, Riley, I have considered going back to my old cameras there, Riley. Um, I have. The problem is I can't use this microphone with them. It's not compatible. Uh, I plug it in and I get a buzzing sound. And the video quality is pretty, I mean, compared to the GoPro, the video quality, it's not even, it's night and day difference. Like, you can see it. Like, if you watch one of my videos now, at the end of my video, it goes to that little highlight clip with the music and whatnot. All of those clips were filmed on my old cameras. So when you see the video end and go to that, you can see a huge difference in video quality. So I don't really want to go back to my old cameras. Now, I have purchased a new camera. I'm, trying, I'm going to try out that new DJI Action 3 camera that they just come out with. Now, it's not shipping out until October. So i got another two or three weeks here before I'll get it. 
but allegedly it doesn't overheat. That's like their big selling point. They've basically taken the problems that GoPro has and refuses to address, and they've addressed them. So this new DJI camera, and again, I can't speak for video quality. I've never used one. But it films in 4K, which is what I film with on my GoPro, and it doesn't overheat, and you can quickly and easily remove it from the mount to change out the batteries, which is another problem I hate with GoPro. When the camera freezes up, I got to... I got to twiddle with that little thumb screw, take it off the mount, pop it out of the media mod that you're forced to have to, to run the mic through, then take the, the battery. It's a, it's a huge hassle. DJI has solved that problem too. So I'm hoping the camera works well. If it does, I'm either going to sell or trash that GoPro. Because again, I love the video quality of the GoPro. It's amazing. But to get that video quality, you have to go through so much hassle between the overheating, the camera just periodically freezing up, the crappy mounts they have for it, um, the media mod, which wiggles loose sometimes. And so I end up, even though I've got the microphone on, when it when it when I bump it or something, it, it, it knocks that part free. Just a lot of hassle with GoPro. I'm hoping the new one works better, but it's not shipping till October, so we got a little while before we'll be trying it out. I'll be cutting somebody a damn good deal on a GoPro if this new camera works, though. So. Oh, Sir, Sir Dirty Wykus. Oh. Oh, uh, winds too much. I, I can't hardly see. I got a. I've, I had pack bait all over my hands and worm juice, and it's all over my screen here. And with the sun, <laughs> it's like I couldn't hardly read that thing. I may have to bust out my glasses in a minute. Carp and catfish baits, tips and tricks, said saw a new GoPro 11 came out. Yeah. And I looked at that because I was willing, I'm willing to pay the money for a new camera. But the new GoPro 11, they're doing these overheating tests. It's overheating just as fast as the GoPro 10. They've improved the video quality even more with the 11. It's got that 10-bit uh, color or whatever. But otherwise, it's, it's the same damn problems that you have with the GoPro 10 and the 9 and the 8 and everyone before it. it they didn't address anything with the overheating, the freezing up. It's still the same crappy mounts. I'm like, I don't know what it's going to take to get GoPro to listen to people, but DJI, my hat's off to them. You know, they, they took all the complaints GoPro had and they've addressed them. Now, whether or not they did a good job with it, I don't know. We'll see when I get to camera. But they claim they fixed GoPro's problems, so we'll see. And that DJI camera is cheaper than GoPro too, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, autistic wood tire. I have the same problem with the, the GoPro. It's, it, you, it, I, have, I struggle to get it out to change the battery. Yeah, I'm with you, Riley. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic because anytime something new comes out, there's oftentimes some problems. And so I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic with it. Elijah says, GoPro better be listening. They ain't. People's had the same complaints since they since they started. They overheat and they freeze up and they still do it. Like like I don't understand why they don't fix it. Look right here. Let me turn the camera around. Middle rod. The lima bean there was getting a little action. A Warrior 2 Alpha said, it's all good. I'm a sportsman myself. Just enjoy watching your videos when I get a chance. Just want to show some gratitude. Well, thank you, Warrior 2 Alpha. Thank you for that big super chat, though, man. I really appreciate you. I don't know, Brady. Is there interest in me going live Friday evening? If there is, we could probably make it happen. Yeah, I'm not, uh, Russ, I'm not competent enough carp fisherman to really be saying when a 
when a bite is better and when it ain't. Y'all keep that in mind, John, about the strawberries there. Probably get, keep them on the, the hook or the hair easier too if they still a little, still had some white in them there if they wasn't fully ripe. All right, let's turn the camera back around. False alarm there with the lima bean. I put on that second, the second lima bean there on that other rod because we had a, we was getting bit. Now the bite seems to kind of stopped a little bit. Douglas Mellon says Friday will interfere with Gold Rush Channel. We need some people out here digging for gold. That's the one thing we miss is people out here digging for gold today. Sandra says, sure live Friday. Can you fish for cats and do ultralight while waiting? Probably just depending on where I was at there, Sandra. I don't know if we can make that happen or not with any success. Howard Kersey said, your raw episodes are awesome. Well, thank you, Howard. That last, that last raw and uncut video bombed, man. It did terrible. One of my worst performing videos of the year. So I, I'm fearful those may have just been a little novelty thing that people watch temporarily. Scroll down. Hey, thanks, James Eddy. I appreciate you watching. Pasta Poet there said, might have to break out the Long John's on for Yeah, I think it's supposed to be a little cooler. Friday, I think today and tomorrow it's going to be hot as the Dickens. And then Friday, it's going to be like high 70. Oh, Gary got disconnected. I wish these guys behind me would get disconnected. Michael Jacobs says, my laugh is historical, man. Every time you laugh, I crack up. I'm glad you like it. Seems like people either love my laugh or they hate it. It's a very polarizing laugh. <laughs> well, I tell you, Wood Turner, I, I keep from having heat stroke by not going out when it's super hot. I get out early mornings and late afternoons and like right now, it's starting to heat up because that sun's hit me, but it really wasn't bad this morning. It was, I think it was in the 60s this morning when I got out here. Old man on the hill said his camera shipped yesterday. I ordered late, I guess, old man on the hill. My thing said it was shipping in October. Tony Jessen says he loves my short videos. Well, thanks, Tony. Yeah, I started that second channel, y'all, for the shorts, and now I'm putting some other stuff on there, too. It's kite catfish highlights. A lot of people don't like the long videos. They don't have time for it, so I'm going to be making some shorter videos on there. Hey, look right here. We got another one on. That one's a pulling, man. That one's a pulling. Did he just come off? No, he's still on there. He's still on there. Got one on the worm. Oh boy, he's swimming hard to the left. He's going for that other line. He's going for it. Can he get in it? Come on, fish, turn right for me. Come on, fish. Hang a right. I'll tell you what I want to do. We're going to get this one to Warrior 2 Alpha right here. If I can land this thing, we're going to dedicate He just hit me with a 50 a minute ago. Warrior 2 Alpha, this is your fish if I can land the daggone thing. It's a carp for sure. He's running too hard to be anything else. Them cats put up a good fight, but they don't fight like this. He's right over them other lines. I hope, I hope he don't get in all these lines, man. I think he... Oh, he's in this one. He's in this line right here. 
can we possibly do this? Did I just make it worse? I may have made it worse. I'm trying to navigate him around it, under it. I've either made it worse or better. We'll find out. <laughs> Could go either way right now. All right, I think we got lucky. I think I navigated him under that other line. Can't hide talent, folks. You can drown it out with chainsaw noise and stump grinding, but you can't hide it. Let's get this one over here and land him before he gets in my rope or my power pole. Come on, fishy. You come back over here, fish. Warrior two alpha is about to be seeing your face, fish. No. Nah. Come on now. There ain't no quit in these carp, man. Ain't no quit in them. It's another good one. Ate some, ate some big carp in this creek today. Come here, come here, come here. Got him. We got him. That's another good one, man. Oh, man. Warrior 2 Alpha, this is yours, buddy, right here. We got the, got the camera sun at a bad angle. We're going to make it work though. This one here got him a worm. The worms have outperformed the lima beans for sure. But the lima beans have caught some fish. Let me hold him up. There you go, Warrior 2 Alpha. That's a nice one, man. That's another good one. The quality of these carp have been really good today. It's got some awesome orange on that tail. You're a fairly pretty fish. You're kind of pale, but you got some awesome orange on your tail there, fish. That fish heard I like my women pale, so he's been hiding away from the sun. He was trying to impress me or something. I don't know. I do like pale women better than tan women for some reason. I don't know why, personal preference. All right, let's find us another worm. See if we can catch another. All they're doing now is stump grinding. They quit, they've quit chainsawing. I guess they're trying to turn this into an all jade job doing one tree at a time. I don't blame them. You get paid by the air, you gotta drag your feet. It's another worm. Bear with me, y'all. We almost back in business. I've lost track too of how many fish that is. It was slow for the first hour, but we finally made it happen out here. We got them over here feeding in this area.
Okay. Let's see what we got going on here. Anything exciting happening in the chat box? Let's see. Warrior 2 Alpha said, watch the last Raw video. Think maybe it's a good idea a couple days a week on certain days. Yeah, I don't know. I'm probably going to pump the brakes on them a little while since that last, the last two haven't done very well. The last one didn't hardly get watched. And the one before that, the watch time, it got average views it was slow to get there but average views and the watch time the last two the watch time haven't been very good so i think it was kind of a novelty thing maybe it's kind of just run its course with people Eric Flowers, about damn time I see you catch a fish. <laughs> no, it had been a little while. Now, Vox Guitar Rocks, don't get me started on the power poles again. I went on a long rant at the beginning of this stream today. I'm very pissed off at power pole right now. I've got one back here, and we got a dumbbell on the front because my other ones, it's, don't get me started, Vox Guitar Rocks. I've given power pole way too much way too much camera time today. Oh man, Warrior 2 Alpha hit me again. He says, beautiful fish, good battle, thank you. Well, thank you, Warrior 2 Alpha. Man, thank you for that. Holly bum, you've loaded me up today too, man. I sure appreciate it. That was a pretty daggone good carp. I mean, we ain't got as many as what I thought. I mean, I really thought today with having baited this for two days, it would be one after another. Like I thought maybe we'd get to a point where I could go down to one rod, like we'd be getting so much action. And that hasn't been the case, but the fish that we've gotten for the most part have been pretty good quality fish, at least in my opinion. But there was one, there was a carp right out there tailing I saw him coming. There was something splashing right over there, too. That was bass on the other bank. That was a carp tailing right there. One of them rods might get bit here in a minute. Because he's right over there by that middle rod. Mad Goatee says, can we talk about your John boat? Uh, yeah. Um... So I ended up buying a boat the other night, y'all. Now, I don't really like it. <laughs> so I'll tell you the story. For those of you that's uh, new to the channel or haven't heard my other stuff, I'd had a bow fishing boat set up a few years ago when I was into it, a little 1436 John boat. I had a front deck on it with lights and everything. And it's a small boat but it was stable enough for me. And, um, you know, I had a heavy wood deck. I had like three lead acid batteries for the lights and the trolling motor, et cetera. And it was still plenty enough stable for me. And so I thought I'd like to kind of have me a John boat to get out and throw out carp bait, maybe move the carp fishing to the boat because I like catching big catfish in the kayak because they pull you around. You know, it's a, it's a tug of war especially out there when I'm suspend fishing. But doing like I'm doing today, either catfishing in shallow water or carp fishing in the shallows, I don't get any extra joy or happiness from fishing out of the kayak. It doesn't really do anything extra. In fact, it's kind of a hindrance because of the lack of space. And so I thought I'd kind of look into a John boat and I wanted another 1436 John boat because it's light enough I can pull with my car. I pulled my other one with the car, no problems. And so anyway, 
my plan was to buy an older John boat with a good trailer and I was going to put a new motor on it. I wanted the old deal to be under 4,000, around 4,000, 4,500. And I thought I can buy a new 15 horse motor, 3,000, 3,500, and then I'll, I'll find me a good deal on a John boat and trailer. Well, I ended up finding a deal from a guy about an hour from me. He lived up by Norse, by Norse Lake. And it was a 14 foot tracker topper boat. It was a 2017 haul, but it had a 2021 Hustler trailer and a 2021 Mercury um, 20 horse motor. Electronic, uh, start there, electric start, got the fuel injection, no choking. And he wanted 4,000 for it. And I was like, well, that's what I was hoping to spend for a whole package and everything's done for me. You know, I ain't got to piece everything together. It had the extras too, you know, it had seats on it, um, spare tire for the trailer you know you buy an old boat you got to buy a gas tank there's fifty dollars you got to buy seats there's a hundred dollars you're gonna have you get an old trailer you got to buy new tires lights bearings you know all that all them little things start adding up and this the whole package four grand i'm like great i'll take it and i take it out i love the motor love the trailer but the boat is significantly less stable than the other 1436 John boat I had. And I think it's because them tracker toppers, they taper toward the front, like really sharp toward the front. And I think it really throws off the stability in it. So I don't really like the boat. I love the motor, I love the trailer, but the boat leaves a lot to be desired. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. It's kind of a, I'm 50, 50 on whether or not I'm gonna keep it right now. But it's nice, you know, I, I come out like Monday for instance, I went fishing with my buddy Mark. He took me out. We went up to the dam and, and caught some bait. And I come home. I loaded up the boat. I drove down here, launched the boat, come out here, baited this area, and was back home within like like an hour, you know. And it would have took me, hell, damn near an hour to unload the kayak, come down here, throw out the bait. You know, that would have been an hour right there. And I was done down here, baited, and back home within an hour. So uh, definitely a time saver from that aspect. But the boat just leaves a lot to be desired. So I may end up switching out the boat or I may sell the whole damn thing. I don't know. I really like that motor though. It was a pretty good deal overall. The, uh, the guy, I mean, he was very meticulous. He had all his records and receipts and everything. The trailer, he paid $1,000 for it a few months ago. The motor was like 3,500 after tax. And of course he had all the records on it. And so, you know, getting a whole deal for four grand when he paid 3,500 for the motor, uh, it, it really worked out on that, but it's so unstable. Like it's fine being in it, but getting in and out of it's kind of tough. And just, I think it's just the design of the boat. Cause my other one, my other one was so much more stable than this. Anyway, there you go. There's the info on the boat, Mad Goatee. Let's see. James Carwell says he thinks it's a YouTube thing, not pushing it. Didn't get a notification on the last one. Yeah, well, here's the thing though, uh, James. YouTube pushing those raw and uncut videos is the only reason I've gotten any views at all. The regular audience, I mean, there's a handful of you in here that like them. But when you look at the numbers, the, the videos that have done well for me, it's like 90% non-subscribe, which, which means YouTube's helping me. They're pushing those videos out. When you break down the numbers, that rod is getting hit. I've only got maybe two or 3,000 people in the regular audience that's watching those videos. And so when you get a situation where they're not pushing it, where YouTube's not pushing it out, you get hit with really low views. And that's what happened on the last video. I'm gonna check this rod. It got hit twice. He may have it. He does have it. Look at my line swimming. Look at my line swimming right there. He was coming at me. Oh yeah. We got you fish. We got you. Is that a buffalo? I think this is a buffalo, y'all. I think we finally got a buffalo. This is on the worm. It is. We got a buffalo. First one of the day. 
Heck yes. Come on over here, Buffalo. I want to land you. Get over here, buddy. Oh, he's pulling now, buddy. I think the smaller the buffalo seems like the harder they fight. Them bigger ones don't seem to fight quite as hard, but this one here has got some, he got some spite in him. This fish here, he said he's, he's sick of hearing chainsaw man too. He's tired of the chainsaws and stump grinding too, man. That's why this fish is fighting so hard. Come over here, fish. Get in that net. We got him. That's fist pump worthy right there. Oh, oh. Hang on, fish. I'll give myself some slack here. I tell you, this is, he's actually a little bigger. He's a little bigger than what I thought he was at first. Let's see, let me find somebody here. Who was that? Where did that last super chat go? So that was Warrior 2 Alpha again. I just dedicated that last fish to him. Let's get, let's get another person here. Let me scroll down. I think we're gonna, who's my last club member that commented? Anthony Clifford. This one's for you, Anthony. We're gonna dedicate the buffalo to you, man. I sure was hoping to get one of these today. I was hoping to get several of them today, actually, but I'll settle for one. I'm so bad at buffalo fishing. I'll take what I can get, man. That's how it is, man. Like, buffalo and women, when you ain't good at it, you just take whatever you can get. Let me get that hook out. There we go. There, we got the hook out. Throw that to the side. I tell you, man, stump grinder, chainsaw, line tangles, we've had a rough morning, but this right here, this right here makes it worthwhile, man. I'm pumped about this fish. There you go, Anthony Clifford, that buffalo's for you. The lighting is terrible where the sun's at, but we're making it work. You're a pale looking thing, Buffalo. This Buffalo, he's sick of the noise too, he said. Get on out of here. Good. I feel a lot better now we got a Buffalo. I like him, I don't know why I like him Buffalo so much, but I do. I guess because I don't, I don't understand them. You know, I don't know why I can't catch them. I mean, I've, there's been times where I've pulled into creeks and saw a bunch of buffalo and can't get them to eat. But most of the ones I've caught recently, and again, very, very few, but the ones I've caught have been on the worms and that one there was on a worm. I got them lima bean. I may have to switch a lima bean out for a worm on them other rods because the lima bean suddenly ain't getting it done. That's awesome, y'all. Got us a dang buffalo, man. Let's get us another worm on there. Worming today. Old Nightcrawler getting it done. Y'all just admire my hat while I'm being over here. I ain't plugged Daniel today, have I? Catfish Sumo, y'all. Listen, normally I plug my link. Code word kayak, 10% off. Uh, channel club mem or channel members get 15% off. But listen, we got the conference coming up. Catfish conference is October 7th and 8th in Kansas City. And he's going to be running big specials at the conference. But... 
for those of you that can't make the conference, there's going to be an online sale too. So if you're about to make an order at Catfish Sumo, keep in mind everything's about to be on sale here in about two weeks or next week. Is it next? Two weeks. Two weeks from now. Yeah, he'll have some big sales. He had a lot of sales at the, at the Kentucky conference. So I'll be out there in Kansas City both days. Hopefully Chainsaw Man over here. Hopefully they won't be coming to Kansas City. Hopefully we'll get some peace and quiet at the show. But I'll be there 7th and 8th in the Catfish Sumo booth. Come out, get you some deals, get you some bargains. There'll be a bunch of other vendors out there. Hopefully it'll be a good show. Let's see. I lost my spot. Okay, there was Warrior 2 Alpha joining the club. Thank you for joining Warrior 2 Alpha. Glad to have you. Uh, again, I was mentioning there Warrior 2 Alpha there's a discount code for Catfish Sumo, 15% off. Mustad gives you all a code, and then there's a merchandise code too. It's in the community tab there on my YouTube channel. All those codes are listed there. Well, thank you for joining the club and all your support today, Warrior 2 Alpha. Brian's has got to keep in mind when you release on a weekend, you're competing with football. Yeah, well, my bicycle video has got to come out on Saturday, so I ain't really got a choice on that because I got a deadline right there with that. But normally I don't like posting on a weekend because of football season. It's, it's tough to compete with that. I sure as hell ain't watching fishing videos on a weekend. I'm watching ball games, so I totally get it. Bill Coulter said, just a thought on the raw and uncut. I watch them all, but might attract more viewers if you mix it up, for instance. I'd love to tag along on a bait run with Mark. Yeah, we, we talked about that. We talked about going live out there. But, uh, you know, again, it's just in the past. The skipjack videos just don't do well. They, they underperform on the channel. Um, no, people just don't watch. So I've tried them. But skipjack and bass videos just don't, they just don't do well. Let's see. SB County Fishing, my bait is pack bait of panko breadcrumbs, strawberry jello, and sweet corn mixed together. And then on the hook, I've got some fake corn, two rods I got lima beans, and two or one rod I got uh, nightcrawler. There's Deanna Phillips. What's going on, Deanna? Another Oklahoma person in here. Yep, Deanna, I'll be out there at the conference. Hopefully you can make it out there. I don't know how far a drive it is for you in Oklahoma to come to Kansas City. I know Ed from Oklahoma, he, I know he's making the drive, but I don't know how far it is. But I hope to see some of y'all out there, you know, people out there that's west of the Mississippi. I, I, it's such a long drive for me to go out there and fish anywhere. Because Tennessee's a fairly long state. It takes about six hours from my house to get to Memphis. But uh, hopefully see a bunch of y'all. Jeremy said he got his hat coming. Be here today. Awesome, Jeremy. Uh, Deanna, it's October 7th and 8th. I think it's just called Catfish Conference. Um, Steve Douglas on Facebook has been sharing some stuff. I think it's got its own Facebook page, though. 
Look at Deanna on Facebook there. Look up Catfish Conference or CatCon, one of the two. Oh, Keith Doc Reed says it's CatCon. Okay, that's what it is. Oh, DBR Bruce, he's drank the Kool-Aid. He thinks we got something for Florida this year. I believe it when I see it. I, I, I believe it when I see it, Bruce. Oh, Jeff O'Neill, he's a Colts fan, yeah. Hard times being a Colts fan. Losing to the, not just losing to the Jaguars, but, I mean, getting handed it to you. <laughs> it's bad. Old Matt Ryan ain't the savior y'all was hoping for. Awesome. Deanna says she's buying tickets. Perfect. Yeah, it'd be nice to meet all, a bunch of y'all. Deanna's coming then. Um, Ed, he's coming, bringing his daughter out. Keith Doc Reed, I know, has said he's going to be there. So, um, and I'm hoping, too, with this, with this um, Kansas City Conference, I don't think it's going to be, I don't think there's going to be as big a turnout. Like, when we were up there in Louisville on the busy times uh, uh, there that first day, there was one point where there was a line like down the aisle around the corner of people just wanting to come up and get a picture and, and shake hands and stuff. And, you know, I kind of felt bad for some of them people. I wasn't trying to rush anybody, but, you know, sometimes you look up and you're like, man, that line's all the way around. You know, I want to see as many people as possible. I, I'm hoping with the Kansas City show, Hopefully it'll be a little bit more, you know, not as crowded. You know, be able to hopefully be a little bit more intimate, get more time with people and stuff. That's what I'm hoping for. We'll see. I hope it's financially worthwhile for the vendors, the companies that make the drive. I know like Catfish Sumo, I think it's a 10 or 11 hour drive for them to get out there. So that's a lot of fuel and uh, they got to pay out the ass for that both to, to, be at the conference, so I'm hoping it's worthwhile for the companies. But I'm hoping there's, I'm hoping there's some time to be able to interact with people. Basically, you want it all. You want to, you want to sell out everything in the booth, and you want to have time to interact with people. It ain't asking much, is it? <laughs> it's like me wanting Axe Man back here to take about a five-minute break. It ain't asking much. He's earned it by God. He's been out here all morning. I don't know where the rest of them went. I guess they just cutting down one tree or something. Yeah, Eric Flowers should be in a Titans fan is tough too, yeah. You know, I'm from Tennessee. I love the Mavals, but Titans, I just can't root for them. They're so boring to watch. I mean, it's Derrick Henry or nothing. I just can't watch them. Creole catfish in 999. He says, Bone Pesci, my friend. Watching from work. Open invitation. If you're ever in my area, well, thank you, Creole. If I'm ever in your area, I'm taking you up on it, by gosh. Bone Pesci, he says. Yeah, I'm going to get down there at some point, Creole. It's, it's happening at some point. I don't know when, but it's happening. I got to finalize all my Texas plans here, too. The Buffalo trip will be three days. I got three days with that guide out there. And um, I paid him extra too. He's baiting, he's baiting 24 hours in advance before I get there. So that should help our cause. But I'm gonna try to plan some other trips around that. I've reached out to Henry there with Catching Dinosaurs. He said the, the alligator garbite's not as good in November. Um, kind of out of season for him, but I think he's gonna take me out one day and we're gonna try. And then there's some other people down there in Texas too. So I'm gonna to try to try to coordinate some other trips around the around the Buffalo trip. So I think I'm gonna be down there about a week. I'm gonna fly out. I still haven't booked my flight. I didn't want to book it back when I first planned the trip because prices were still so high. I was hoping it'd come down, and they have come down a lot. But I gotta book that trip here soon. I'm gonna fly into Dallas and rent a car. So where we're gonna be Buffalo fishing? I think he said it's an hour and a half from the airport there. So I'll be here before we know it. Got the conference here in a couple weeks, Kansas City, and then Texas trip in November. This year's flown by. It has absolutely flown by.
We got Russell St. Pierre with a 10 spot. Thank you, Russell. I appreciate that, man. Didn't leave a comment with it. I'll keep an eye out, see if he leaves a comment under it. Great outdoors as he watches every second of the raw and uncut. Hey, I'm glad you like them, man. I like me some ultralight fishing. And I like the concept of them raw and uncut because it's easy on me. Other than just dealing with overheating cameras. I got to be filming in the shade when I do it. But the last, the last two videos kind of concerning. I've done five of them. The first one was eh, kind of inconclusive. Second and third one did great. Fourth one, yeah, less views, less watch time. And then the last one was a total bust. Terrible views, terrible watch time. So I've got that second channel, my highlights channel, which was just gonna be for shorts and shorter videos. And I've got, I don't know, like 1,100 subscribers now. So I've met the threshold for monetization on there on that channel with subscribers. But your shorts videos don't count toward watch time. How stupid is that? I've got like 2,000 hours of watch time just from shorts videos that are under a minute long. But I can't count any of that toward my watch time for monetization. So I was thinking if I do another raw and uncut, I may put that on the shorts channel just for the watch time. Because if I only got you know a few hundred views at an hour and a half video, that's that's a long that'll put me a long ways toward hitting that four thousand hours. So I may end up trying that. But I don't know when I'll be doing another ultralight trip. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out in the morning and do some catfishing because I'm still loaded up on bait from Monday. I went there fishing with Mark. We went below the dam in his boat and loaded up on bait. And I filmed a video yesterday, which will come out tomorrow and uh so i'll probably catfish tomorrow maybe friday morning some people on here want me to go live friday night i may get back out and do a live stream friday night may do one from the boat or something if i can get a, a solid camera mount hooked up in it so um, that's the next few days trip i don't have any ultralight i may do an ultralight trip this weekend possibly i may get out the tennessee game is 3 30 on saturday so I'll be watching it and probably take Sunday off and fishing, just watch ball games. I like to just take Sunday and just watch NFL. I'm, I'm more of an NFL, I'm a huge Tennessee Vols fan. I love Tennessee. But regular college football is so hard to watch because there's so many cupcake games, man, where you're playing, you know, where it's Alabama playing tractor supply cashiers, you know, just unwatchable. NFL is just a better TV product, so I'll, I spend I spend a fair amount of time on on Sundays watching football, and of course Monday and then Thursday nights. A lot of NFL on anymore. I'm glad I used to hate the Thursday night game. I thought it was a terrible idea when they first done it, but now I'm super into that Thursday night game. It's usually a pretty good game on anymore. That first year they did it, it was some terrible games, but uh, I'm pretty into it now. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent nobody cares about. We'll see if Russell St. Pierre left a comment down there. Penny says, this year seems fast because of the lackluster two years of lockdown. You could be on to something there, Penny. Now that the world's kind of opened back up, it does seem like time's going by quicker. Uh, James Carwell, it's Kayak Catfish Highlights is the name of the other channel. It's mostly just going to be shorts because YouTube's pushing the shorts so hard and shorter videos where I take longer videos and kind of cut them down. But I may throw them ultralight videos on there for the time being just to get my watch time so I can get monetized. Roy's randomness so he got to order a hat and then go catfishing there in texas hey some good catfishing down there i see a lot of big fish caught down there in texas ryan spangler says it's hard to get into college ball now with all the transfers yeah ryan i think that's a big part of it for me because used to 
when you turn on a Tennessee game, those were our guys. You know, we got a saying here in Tennessee, VFL, Vol for Life. That's not really the case anymore. It's your Vol for Life and, and until you have somebody else starting over you or something, and then you just transfer. You know, it's, it's taken away. You know, last year, everybody was faking injuries to get extra timeouts and stuff, and that made it hard to watch. And the college game in general, it's just... The NFL, man, their TV product is just so much better. For to, You know, just as a fan watching, it's just better. I feel like the storylines are better in the NFL. You know, college, it's pretty much SEC. You know, and there's a few programs, USC, Ohio State, Clemson, you know, Notre Dame occasionally. You know, those programs outside of the SEC, but mostly college football is very just SEC. Whereas the NFL, I mean, there's so much parity in the NFL. I mean, look at Cincinnati last year. Awesome team all the way to the Super Bowl. Now they're 0-2 to start this year. I mean, it's just so much parity. There's so many storylines. It's, so, it's just a better, more entertaining thing to watch, at least in my opinion. I'm way more into NFL than I am college. But I do love me some balls, and hopefully, hopefully we're going to knock off Florida this weekend. We're 10 point favorites, which I find, if I was betting, I'm not going to bet it. But if I was betting it, I would bet Florida. I would take Florida in the points. I hope I get, I hope I'm wrong. I hope it's a blowout. I hope we stick it to Florida because I hate Florida fans. I don't hate Florida fans as bad as I hate Chainsaw Man behind me today. It's close, but not as much. But I hope we stick it to Florida this weekend. But I think it's going to be a closer game than people anticipate. A-plus homesteads, so speaking of college football, go Big Blue, Kentucky Wildcats. I'll tell you what, A.J., man, Kentucky's got a good team this year. They got a real good team. Now, I don't think they're on Georgia's level, so I don't think they're going to come out of the East to compete for the SEC championship, but they're a, they're a real good team. That quarterback looks like he's the real deal. Brady Parrish says, who do you have winning the Super Bowl? I think it's going to come down to either, I think in the AFC championship game, I think it's going to be Kansas City and Buffalo. And ultimately, whoever wins that game, I think goes on to win the Super Bowl. I don't know which one of them two is going to win, but that would be my pick. As far as who they play against in the NFC, I think Brady, if he gets his offensive line straightened out, I think he's got a real good shot. I mean, their division's so bad, that he's probably going to get a first-round bye. Philadelphia looks really good. I mean, it's Philadelphia, but I took some, I made two I made two big bets this year, y'all. Preseason bets. I took Minnesota winning the division, and I took Philadelphia winning their division. And I took a lot of flack from the Cowboys fans. It's the Cowboys year. I was stupid for betting on Philadelphia. Boy, I, my gosh, Philadelphia looks damn good right now. And I know Dallas snuck out a win there on Cincinnati somehow. But I think Philadelphia is the class of that division. I think I'm walking away a winner at the end of the season on that. But I don't know who's going to come out of the NFC. Could be the Rams, could be Philadelphia, could be Tom Brady. But I think it's Kansas City or Buffalo's year. Whoever whoever wins AFC is going to go on to, to win the Super Bowl. Awesome, Keith. Thank you. Thank you uh, for subscribing to the other channel there, Keith. Shane says, I need to fire those chainsaw guys. That's the truth, man. I mean, did they just cut down one tree back here today? Is that all they cut down? All that racket, they've literally cut down one tree. Two trees. They've cut down two trees. That's all they've accomplished. They disrupted our whole damn live stream this morning to cut down two trees. I <laughs> mean, Unreal.
Douglas the bluegills, typically all the way through fall, the bluegill bite, you get some bigger bluegill here up in the shallows, all the way up until, usually we'll have a real good cold snap November sometime, after the frost. The bluegill bite tends to slow down a little bit, and then I gotta start working the backwater creeks a little more. But that main channel bluegill bite will be good through October for sure, unless we just have some crazy weather. But I've been getting some real good bluegill lately. Creole said the last time he watched an NFL game was when the Saints won the Super Bowl. That's been a long time, Creole. I don't, I, if you're waiting for the Saints to get back to the Super Bowl before you watch again, you're going to be, you're going to be waiting a while. Because old Jameis Winston ain't getting them back there. <laughs> Russ St. Pierre said, watching from work and appreciate you making my time go by. Well, thank you, Russ. Denny says Bengals will get it fixed. Too much talent not to. I agree. When you got Burrow and Jamar Chase, they're going to get that offense going. It's a matter of time. But, you know, Burrow had that appendectomy. He missed some preseason time. I think people, I think people take for granted just how skilled these guys are. And when you miss preseason time and your, your timing is off with your receivers, it's – it's a big deal, but I think by week four, week five, they'll be rolling. And that division, you know, Cincinnati's division there, Pittsburgh's terrible. Cleveland's a dumpster fire as always. The Ravens' offense looks good, but, you know, they blew that huge lead against Miami last week. And so, you know, are they the real deal or not? So I think Cincinnati will be fine. I think they're ultimately a playoff team when it's said and done, but they've, they've definitely put themselves in a little bit of a hole here to start the season. That Dallas game was a, they had it. They had it in the bag, man. Warrior 2 Alpha back with another 50. Holy cow. Thank you so much, man. He said, all roads go through Kansas City. I think you're right, man. All the TV people have said it's Buffalo's year. It's Josh Allen's year. And listen, Buffalo looks phenomenal. But I watched... I watched last year Kansas City and Buffalo go at it, and by gosh, Kansas City, Kansas City prevailed. <laughs> so uh, until Josh Allen goes in there and and beats Mahomes when it matters, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean toward Kansas City. Either way, we're all winners. If you're a football fan and you're watching Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes play, it's I mean as quarterback play ever been better in the NFL than it is right now? I mean, with Mahomes and Allen, Tom Brady still rocking it at 45. I'm not a huge Aaron Rodgers fan, but you can't hide his talent. I mean, I don't know that quarterback play has ever been better. Thank you again for that super chat there, Alpha. You're, you've lit me up today, man. It's been awesome. Ed says Tom Brady just announced retirement again. <laughs> I'm I'm become a, a Tom Brady fan, y'all. I, I used to I used to hate Tom Brady back when Peyton was playing. You know, I just how can you root for that guy? Always winning up there in New England, knocking Tom or knocking Peyton Manning out every year and stuff. But Tom Brady went from being the most hated villain. Now he's almost an underdog. Right, I mean, he, he for the longest time he was that good-looking guy, star quarterback, supermodel wife, the perfect life, totally unrelatable. Now he's gotten a little older, you know. New England, he had the falling out with Belichick in New England, and, and you look at him, he's like, okay, you know, here's a guy. He was good. Now the people that had his back, they're kind of doubting him. You know, they, they're writing him off, and that's relatable, right? Because we've all been doubted in life. We've all been kind of underestimated. So he goes to Tampa, a 
dumpster fire organization, historically bad, and turns them around. It's like, okay, you know, he's leading the he's leading the underdogs. It's bad team. That's kind of that's a story you can get behind. And now he's, you know, all this trouble with his wife and his marriage has come out. And again, that's relatable because we, hell, we've all had relationship problems. All of us men suck at being in a relationship with our girlfriends and wives. We all, we're all bad at it. So it's okay, Tom Bray, he's human. You know, he's very relatable. And then you throw in the fact that he's 45 and still playing a NFL at an elite, not just playing, but like, I mean, he's a top five quarterback in the league right now still at age 45. And it's like... To be doing that well at that age, I, I'm pulling for the guy. I'm rooting for him. I don't know. I never thought that. Go back in time five years. If you told me I'd be rooting for Tom Brady today, I told you. You're, first off, I'd say he'd done long retired. But the fact that I, I would have told you you're crazy. But I'm rooting for the guy. I hope he does well. I'd like to see him win a Super. I don't think. Even if he makes it the Super Bowl, I don't think he beats Kansas City or Buffalo, but Tom Brady, for one game, anything's possible. Daniel Creech, as we all know, I can't pick football teams. I'm out of the league. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> That's the truth, man. I went out on week one. I checked it this past week, though. So we had, in our Survivor League, we had 48 people. And most years in the Survivor League, it takes usually by about six weeks, half the people have been knocked out. This year in week one, 30 out of the 48 got knocked out. And then this past week, a bunch more got knocked out. I think we had nine people get knocked out. Uh, Cincinnati knocked a few out and Cleveland knocked a few out. And so I think we're down to single digits after uh, after two weeks, down to, went from 48 down to single digits in the Survivor League. Just crazy year. But yeah, I got knocked out week one, y'all. It's embarrassing. It's You never want to lose, but you especially don't want to lose in week one. I mean, that's just, that's bad. <laughs> I did really bad. I'll never root for Russell Wilson again, ever. He's on my doo-doo list for life. That's what got the Colts on my duty list, was knocking me out in week one a few years ago. Yeah, Marshawn, I think his wife wants, I think Brady's wife wants him to focus on family. I'd like to see him play a few more years. I mean, he's an interesting experiment of how long he can keep his body right and keep playing at that level. And his division's so bad, I mean, even if he drops off a notch, he's going to win that division for the next two or three years. I mean, he's got Carolina, New Orleans, and uh, oh, I'm drawing a brain cramp. Who else is in Atlanta? Dumpster fires. I mean, all three of them teams are dumpster fires, so he's going to win that division the next two or three years if he wants to play. And, you know, again, you put Tom Brady in the, in the playoffs – Anything's possible on any given Sunday. Double C says he's still in the top nine. Heck yeah, buddy. I, I hope you I hope you go all the way, my friend. I'm pulling for you, man. I was rooting against all you guys when I was still in the league, but now, now I'm rooting for you and uh, Matt LeClaire. He's still left in there too. So I'm rooting for you guys. Let's rebate, y'all. You want to rebate? We ain't even had a bite in a while. What time is it? It's 1049. Hopefully, hopefully the sun beating down is not going to overheat us. Well, let's throw out some more bait. The lima beans not got it done in a while. Well, I'm snagged. That's the one. We've had nothing but noise out here. Them guys finally leave. Or doing something different now, I'm snagging. You know what? I didn't want to fish with that rod no more anyway. I'll go get it when we're done today. Let's reel in this one. We'll get it rebated. I ain't gonna fish too terribly much longer. Listen, something got my lima bean off this one. Let's put us a worm on. 
We're going to try the lima beans again, but I got more confidence in the worm right now. I don't understand, you know, and again, it ain't none of my damn business. I mean, it's really, it's none of my business. But they come out here. When you hire a tree cutting crew, especially when you're doing the stump grinding and stuff, that ain't cheap. I mean, that's just to get them to show up is a fee in itself. They've cut down like two trees back here. I mean, if you're clearing out space, why not clear all that out right there? Why stop at them two trees? But that's apparently all they've done. I, I, again, it ain't none of my damn business. It ain't my money. It ain't my land. It ain't none of my business. But it don't make no damn sense to me. Let's get us another worm on here. Them guys, have, uh, they might be on lunch break. They might be coming back or something. I hope they tune in to my channel here, and I hope they give me some super chats for disrupting the whole program this morning. They, them, them fellas on their lunch break ought to, ought to super chat me one time for the trouble they've caused. We've made it work, though, by gosh. Through chainsaw noise and stump grinding, line tangles, out here rocking it today with a power pole and a dumbbell to keep myself positioned. We're getting it done in the end. We have made it work. Got some good fish. Had some good conversations here when I can hear myself talk, hear myself think. Got some fish here on this new reel. This Daiwa BG reel I bought. I gave $100 for that thing. I like it. It's got a little bit more line capacity than the 3000 series I've been rocking, which I clearly need because I've got that one over there. There's so little line left on it, I'm about to get spooled. But this wide handle here, you know, it sticks out farther, got the big knob. I kind of like it. I may, I may pick me up a couple more of them. Let's reel this in and put us on another worm. The worm's gone on this one too. Something, something's robbed us. But yeah, I didn't get the number of fish I thought we'd get today. But the, I don't know how many fish I've got now, six, eight. The quality has been excellent on most of them. We, we've got, what do we get? Two really small carp. And I think the rest of them have been good quality. And we've got that buffalo. Fishing-wise, has been pretty good. Not been the most pleasant viewing experience for everybody, but the fishing, been pretty good overall. I'll take it. I've had worse days, that's for sure. I've been some catfishing trips lately where I just ain't been up getting nothing going. I don't know what's up with the cats lately. I've been struggling on them. I'm going to try it again tomorrow, though. I think I'm going to go a little bit shallower tomorrow for the cats. I got on some yesterday main channel, 40 feet. But tomorrow I'm gonna move shallower. All right, I think we reset again here, y'all, on two rods. Got two night crawlers out there and some pack bait. Lima beans has been a fun experiment today. Got a got a couple fish on the lima beans. I even had that one, the one channel cat that bit, ate the lima bean. Thankfully, we ain't seen many channel cats today. I'm gonna touch my phone, see how hot we are. 
it's not too hot. Okay, we're rebated now. Let's see. Let's see what all we're at. Richard Martinez, man, just had total knee replacement, buddy. I hope you get to feeling better soon, Richard. Hopefully, hopefully they get you back to normal with that knee replacement, though. Let's see, let me scroll down. Warrior 2 Alpha says AFC equals SEC, NFC equals Big Ten. That's, that's the truth. It's funny how that is, ain't it? I mean, the AFC, there's so many good quarterbacks in the AFC, but the NFC, it's not much. It's Brady and Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I'm, I mean, Jalen Hurts has looked good. I'm still not sold on him. Matt Stafford had a good year last year, but... Who knows, you know, who knows? The Rams ain't, they're not firing on all cylinders yet. But yeah, we're, that's, that's a good analogy right there, Alpha. This is all to try a hot dog chunk. I ain't got any hot dogs today. Clinton Jesus, depending on the crew, two trees could be over 5,000. I know it ain't cheap. I, I I had some trees cut down uh, years ago, and this was, gosh, 10 years or more ago, and it was expensive. And they've brought in a bunch of equipment today. I mean, they had that, that bucket truck in here. They've had the stump grinder in here. They had a full crew working. That ain't, that ain't cheap. Yeah, John, I've heard of people using grapes, um, catch buffalo with them. Grapes and strawberries. I'm on. I'm gonna try some other stuff. I just. I want to see what that buffalo guy down there in Texas. I want to see what he uses. And I want to learn about seasonal stuff too. You know, like if there's certain baits, certain times of year work better. That's. I'm very fascinated. I want to know his rigs, his locations, like what he's looking for. I want to learn about buffalo behavior. I got a lot of questions. This guy better. He better be prepared down there because I'm gonna have a notebook with questions. I got him for three days. There will be no stone unturned. I'm gonna be picking his brain nonstop, all three days. I don't know, Lynn, it, it don't make no sense. It'd been a whole lot cheaper on just cut the trees down, let them fall in the water. Hey, Lynn, you have fun painting today, by gosh. <laughs> uh, Warrior 2 Alpha, my drag is set pretty light carp fishing. Um, early on, my drags, when, when I was kind of trying to learn how to carp fish, one of the big mistakes I made was having my drag set too tight. Their mouths are so fleshy, so soft, you'll pull a hook out every time if your drag's set too tight. You really got to play your drag. And so these drags are set light and I'll tighten it. When they make that first run, it's oftentimes they're bolting. And so I keep them really loose now and then I'll tighten it as I'm reeling them in. But even then I still keep them pretty light. Yeah, there probably is some stuff coming in behind me here in the shallows. I wouldn't be surprised. Jim Dishman said his favorite carp bait is Wheaties and water. Yeah, Derek Parker, I'm planning on taking the camera down there to tell you. I got to. I got to do something down there because I got to justify. The, I'm going to write that trip off on taxes right there, y'all. That's a little business tip 101. We're writing that trip off. It's a, it ain't a vacation. It's a business expense, business trip. So I got to film something down there. I was thinking what I'd probably do. I'm going to be fishing three days. I thought I'd make one video, combine three days into one, and maybe do a live stream down there, if we got service. I don't know if we will or not. 
But if I could do one video and a live stream, I think that would be ideal. I might could even film a video on the first day, go live, and then take the other two days just fish, you know, not even fool with the cameras. But I gotta film something. I don't think the video will do very good view-wise, I don't think, because buffalo aren't a popular fish. Um, and being that it's, that trip is mid-November, so it'll be after Thanksgiving probably before I get that video, get home and get that video posted and done, my views will be so bad by then that it's, it's not going to be a good performing video for me. So I don't really see a need to try to get two or three videos out of that trip. I think one video, trying to treat it like an educational type thing, try to teach you all what I'm learning, I think will be a good, good thing. I'm going to Lake Fork, Jeremy. Uh, Warrior, um, most of my reels here are 3,000 size, which are pretty small for this style of fishing. Um, this Daiwa BG here, it's a 4,000. In hindsight, I like the lighter, I really like those lightweight reels and they're cheaper too. There's like, there's like $60. And sometimes you can find them on sale, um, those 3000 series. But in hindsight, I was kind of wishing I'd gotten a little bit more line capacity. It's fine today where I'm making short casts in a creek, but that trip I had done recently where I went to Fort Loudon Dam and I was making longer casts, the lesser line capacity kind of come into play there. And I was kind of, yeah, I wish I'd got a 4,000 size. So I'm thinking about, I, I, I'm liking this reel. I've reeled in you know, a couple good fish on it here this morning and I'm really liking it. Those are a little bit more expensive than the others. Those are, I, I think they're like 115 normally. I'd got that one on sale for 100. I may pick me up a couple more of those. Because I think when I'm carp fishing, I think I'm gonna be mostly fishing with three rods. Um, you know, a big wide open area like out here I could throw out five or six rods. I have done it. But these carp, when they make their runs, you've seen it out here today. Those of you who's been watching my stream for a while, I mean, they'll turn and they go shooting to the right or going to the left and they cross up everything. And so I think three rods is a good number. You can put out, you can try a couple baits that, that you got confidence in and an experimental bait like I've done here today with the lima bean still get action and space your lines out far enough that you're not dealing with tangles all the time. So I think three rods is ideal. So I, I may get a couple more of those reels and uh, those be my three carp setups. And then, you know, have another rod with me. So I had, I had an extra one with me here today so that if I had to cut off or something, I wouldn't have to sit here and retie a hair rig and all that on camera. I could just bust out the other rod. Tony Jessen says, time for Price is Right. Old Bob Barker. Pay Lake Hater says, have you chosen a bike yet? Need to list the others before it gets cold. Yeah, and I've actually had another bike show up yesterday, Pay Lake Hater. Um, I think the company's name was High Boy. I think it was. Showed up yesterday. I got to put it together. Um, my girlfriend's aunt is going to buy one, I think. She's interested. And so I'm going to give her first shot. She's going to come over hopefully sometime this week, take a look. Whichever one she wants, she can, she can buy. And then I'm going to list the others. And um, I think I like the mock wheel one better. I think that's my favorite. But um, I like that Velo Wave one too, the first one I got. So I don't know. One of those two I'm going to keep. The others I'm going to sell. And of course, I got to try out the one I got yesterday. I got to put it together. It may be okay. But um, these companies, man, they just keep sending me bikes and I'm going to keep taking them. Uh, it's easy money. And, you know, some of these companies, they offer money and a bike. Some of them just, all, they just offer a bike. I mean, I'm going to get a few hundred dollars off of it. So hard to turn it down. Daniel Creech says, the fish you catch is not the reason people watch it. It's your personality. You're very entertaining. Well, thank you, Daniel. I feel like I'm 
more entertaining when Chainsaw Man ain't going, though. No. I feel like we're more in a groove here now that they've... And of course, the fish have stopped biting, naturally. Chainsaw wraps up and the fish stop biting, but definitely more in the groove when I've got peace and quiet and not a war zone like we had earlier going on. Uh, Vox Guitar Rocks, this is just a uh, Walmart net. Ozark Trail or whatever. $30 job from Walmart. Yeah, Harley, I used ugly sticks for a long time. Still got a couple of them. AZ Cat Girl bought one of my ugly stick rods. There she is in the comments. She says she's very curious about the bikes. Yeah, I tell you, AZ Cat Girl there, they're all... If you were going to buy one and like really ride it seriously, I'd tell you to get a good quality brand. You know, spend more and get a good quality brand. All these bikes that I have, they're all different companies, but it's the same motors. It's the same gears. It's just different paint job on each one, different company name. They're all basically the same thing. So I'd tell you to, you know, I ain't had any problems out of these bikes yet, but you read the reviews on them, a lot of the reviews are questionable. So I'd tell you to get a good quality brand if you were really interested in riding one, especially if you're going long distances or something. The yeah, Arizona cat, she bought one of my uh, ugly sticks last year. I had tried to auction them things off on eBay because I wasn't going to be using them anymore with me having my signature series rod. And I thought people out there might be interested in them because those, those rods, I had them four ugly sticks. They kind of built my channel, you know? And so I sold a couple of them there, but my auctions got hijacked. People, uh, one of them auctions, people were running up the bids, my haters and stuff. And so that's why I'm hesitant to do the yard sale thing now because I think people are going to jack with it. But I got some other two ugly sticks at the house I need to do something with. I need to get rid of them, and I got a bunch of stuff for the yard sale. Man, I got I got stuff in the house. I got stuff for the shed. I got them bikes I need to get rid of. I got a lot of stuff. I may be selling these damn power poles before it's said and done. Too, I'm pissed off at power pole. So anyway, I got a lot of stuff to sell. I got to figure out how I'm going to do the online yard sale. Oh, Daniel, I went on the power pole rant first thing. And in the last live stream when it tore up there right before I went live. Warrior 2 Alpha, I like mono for catfishing. And um, I use fluoro braid sometimes uh, when I'm bass fishing, but mainly just mono for catfish and mono for my ultralight and then i use braid here for the for the carp brady parish said he likes me because of my personality he says i'm just a good old boy i like your i like your style brady some people like me some people don't that's all right it's okay if people don't like me because I don't like a lot of them either. That's awesome, Quinn Shepard. I'm, I'm glad that bait's working out for you. Keith Doc Reed says we all like a trigger, Justin. <laughs> Douglas Mellon said, between you and John, y'all have electric bike advertisements about wrapped. Well, that's the truth, Douglas. And I, and I tell you, man, I, I, I feel bad about posting this video, I'm gonna post on Saturday because I didn't do worth a crap fishing. But they wanted me doing a fishing video. This company that sent me one yesterday, I think they just want like a bike video. They want it, it's gotta be eight minutes long. There's a couple of talking points I gotta hit. Some of them have been, like that one company, I can't remember which one it was. Was it Mockwheel? Mock wheel, I had to have a fishing video. That's the one I mounted the rod holder to. Well, the one of them I did a live stream with. Maybe that was Mock wheel. I can't remember. It's one of them I did a live stream with. That company was super cool. They're like, regular video, live stream. Just talk about the bike. Awesome. But some of these companies, like I turned down one bike 
and again, I mean, you know, these are $1,700 bike. But I turned that damn thing down because, I mean, they wanted, they had a list of crap they wanted from me. Like, first off, it had to be, there was a certain time length it had to be. There was all these different angles and shots that I had to get. Um, it had to be just about the bike. It couldn't be anything else. They wanted me to sign a release form, giving them access to my content to, to either break up the video however they wanted to, put it on their website with no links, et cetera, et cetera. I had to get all these other pictures for their social media. I mean, it was just a whole list of crap that they wanted. And I'm like, why the hell am I going to do all this crap for you in exchange for this bike when I got all these other companies that'll just give me a bike in exchange for a video? No restrictions. You know, so I turned that one down. But these bikes are going to pay for my trip to Texas. So when I said, now, once I get them sold, I think what I'm going to do is just put half price on them. Like whatever, whatever they go for new, I'm just going to sell them for half price. I think they'll go pretty quickly. Either from the YouTube audience or just people here locally. Because I'm seeing more and more people out on the walking trails and stuff with these electric bikes. But that'll pay for my Texas trip. I get a few more bikes that may pay for the boat I got. It's been pretty easy money on them bikes. I had um, I had the Ridge reach back out to me the other day too. Hopefully I can do something else with them. They're another company I like working with because they, they're just like, you know, hit these talking points. However you get there is how you get there. Like I did an ad last year for a company called Bravo Sierra. Good company, good products. And, you know, and it was a nice payday for what they wanted from, but, but it was so like their requirements were so much that for me to work it into a video, it just didn't flow. It wasn't natural. You know, I had to, I had to treat it like an advertisement and those suck, you know, people fast forward through that, but like the Ridge and Manscaped, Manscaped was another company. They're like, we need you to hit, talk about this, this, and this, but however you get there total creative control and so if i can if i can work it in as a joke somehow and be funny and get it going it, it goes so much smoother and you keep people engaged versus just treating it like a static commercial that everybody's going to fast forward through some companies like that are cool to work with and others are just I, how the hell did i get off on this tangent nobody cares about this nobody no literally nobody out there wants to hear me talking about this and i'm just going on and on about it lord let's change the subject Pay Lake Hater says he's a machinist and engineer. He fixed his power poles himself. Replaced the cheap plastic drive gear with brass. No problem since. Well, I ain't got that kind of talent. I, I ain't going to be breaking these things down and fixing them myself. <laughs> we'll see you next time, Brady. You know, and in my opinion, on these power poles at $600 a pop, they shouldn't be no plastic gears in there. It should be brass to begin with. It should be good quality. But like I said, the other people that I've talked to since that have had them, my, my buddy Eric Romines, he had, he had one of his tore up back when he had a kayak. You know, in their customer service, the turnaround time, the battery pack was, I had it within a few days because they didn't make me send it in. They just sent me a new one and told me to send in the old one, you know, but they went ahead and got it in the mail that day. And it was a pretty good experience. But when the motor and this one or the other one tore up, I'm like, you know, I haven't used it enough to tear it up. So that's a problem. But the fact that they wanted to, wanted me to send it in and they were going to look at it and evaluate it and possibly repair it. I'm like, how long is this going to take? You know, I'm, I, I do this crap for a living. I need, these are tools. I bought this as a tool. This is something I use in my job. I need this. And so, you know, that's frustrating because I need, I, not only do I need stuff to work, but if it tears up, I need it fixed quickly. And so this time I don't feel like they had the sense of urgency that I wanted them to have. <laughs> Anyway, how am I talking about power pole again? I've given them way too much time today. Vox Guitar Rock says, but wait, there's more. <laughs> you know, when I get on a rant, it's hard for me to get off of it. 
Travis Gentry said, all these years he never knew Tom Brady had a 15-year-old from another woman. Yeah, I think he does have another kid. Well, I about knocked that pedal off. I think he does have another kid from a, another woman or something. I don't keep up with the personal lives of these athletes. It really kind of griped me that everybody was talking about Brady and his marriage problems and stuff. And I'm like, you know, if you want to criticize him on the field, that's one thing. But his wife, his private life, that ought to be... That shouldn't be reported on by sports shows. You know, that's kind of, that ought to be some boundaries, some off-limit stuff. You know, maybe I'm a little bit more sensitive to it since I'm on YouTube and, and whatnot. And, you know, a lot of people have wanted me to put my girlfriend on videos. And I'm open to it, but she's not. She don't want to be on camera and she don't want, she don't want to deal with the comments that I get in the comment box. You know, all the hate and negativity and stuff and and you know so i guess because i see that side of it oh and i see these news reporters and stuff talking about brady's marriage like it's any one it ain't another damn business and two i guarantee you all them sports reporters and news outlets and stuff they all got problems at home like everybody else does so i guess i'm a little bit more i don't know i'm just not into it i'm not into all that stuff i'm all for the behind the scenes of what's going on in the locker room and team and stuff but I don't care about their marriages and what's going on in that. Ain't none of my business. Callie back with the 20 says, how's the fishing been? My cat decided I need to get up now, and here you are. Well, Callie, you slept through all the chainsaws somehow. I don't know how you done it, and thank you for that super chat. We had a window of time, Callie, where some carp moved through, some good quality carp, and we caught a few. And now it's been dead here for the last probably an hour now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here soon. Now that the chainsaws have left, it's time for me to go. <laughs> I mean, I mean seriously, they're gone now. They're gone. They're done. It's time to go. But yeah, we had a good run there, Kelly. Yeah, Travis Gentry said he respects Tom's determination. Yeah, I do too. I mean, hell, I have a hard time getting motivated to get up and go fishing some days, and he's out there working to be an elite level player. And just how he keeps his body in shape, I mean, just the, the discipline. You know, when I go home today, I'm going to kick back on the couch. I'm going to have a probably a Mountain Dew and some potato chips, you know. And Brady, he don't, he don't touch that stuff. <laughs> I'm like, his disciplines, it, it's next world, man. It's next level. Ed, the dog's doing pretty good. Um, she got her ass busted the other day again. I took her out on the boat there with me when I was trying it out. And she did really good in the boat. We get back. I walked her on the leash up to the car. And I had lifted my back tailgate up to back the trailer down on the do so I can see. And I left it up and I was walking out to get back in the boat and drive it on a trailer. And I told her, sit and stay. She was doing so good. And I got in the boat and out she come and right into the water, soaking wet. So I busted her ass for that. And then she's spiteful, you know, if you scold her at all, she's gonna misbehave the rest of the day. So I get back home, I'm doing some stuff outside. I'm looking around, I can't find her. Like, where the hell did the damn dog go? Oh, she's across the street. She's went through the fence, across the street, up in the woods at the neighbors. So she got her butt busted again. But otherwise, she's been doing really good overall. She's, she's turning into a fine, a fine young lady. We're going to make her into a good dog before it's said and done. Other than, other than her fascination with other animals' poop, that's the one thing I can't seem to break. Every time she sees another animal's poop, she wants to roll around in it. I don't know why she does that, but she does. But otherwise, she's going to be a good dog. Willis Cops is exactly. We now live in a world where people feel they have the right to know everyone else's business. That, that's the truth, man. Social media has been good in a lot of ways, but it's been bad in a lot of ways, too. And that's one of the ways it's been bad at.
Douglas Mellon says, yeah, she don't want to hear. Damn girl, you could have done better. <laughs> uh, she probably would hear some of that too. <laughs> yeah, Vox, I had the chainsaw bites, what I had going, I guess. No, I ain't done anything with the garden this year. I was feuding with my neighbors and they didn't get my fence put up in time to plant, so I'll put out one next year. Kelly says, and chainsaws wasn't nothing. She's used to sleeping through everything. <laughs> A plus home says, I don't know what's going on in Brady's life and don't want to know. I'm with you. He's Tom Brady and deserves respect he's earned. He's the GOAT, man. I don't care what anybody says. I'm a huge Peyton Manning fan. But Brady's just... The fact he's done it, what he's done, and done it for so long. And I do think Belichick. I mean, I, th I think Brady and Belichick was a good combination. And I'm sure, like any relationship, they've had tons of problems that we'll never know about. But... I think him and him and Belichick were a good combo together, and we've we've seen Belichick now struggle without Brady. But I don't know what they're doing up there in New England. It's this whole year has been weird. It's almost like they're trying to tank with the coaching decisions they've made and the team, the roster they put out there, but they're not tanking. And it's weird. I don't get it. Belichick's smarter than me, though. It's hard to question him, but at the same time, how can you not question him, what he's done? I mean, Matt Patricia's calling plays. I mean, Matt Patricia was a defensive coordinator and a lousy head coach of the Lions, but he's calling plays. And poor Mac Jones. I don't feel too bad for Mac Jones because he played at Alabama, and I hate Alabama. But he ain't got no weapons. He ain't got nobody to throw to. I don't know. I don't think New England's going to have a very good year. Their season total in Vegas air on, on the sports books and stuff was eight and a half wins. And I was real close to betting the under because I looked at their schedule and I thought they might get like seven wins. But I didn't end up doing it. Out of respect to Belichick, I didn't make the bet. I did bet on Philadelphia to win their division and Minnesota to win theirs. Russ St. Pierre says, Joe Rogan says, never read your comments. Yeah, that's good advice. I would, I, my problem was I started with the comments. And I've built relationships with people on here through the comment box. My new channel that I started, comments are turned off. TikTok, comments are turned off. Uh, any new channels I start on YouTube will not have a comment box enabled. But on this channel... You know, because I've because I've gotten to know some of you all through the comment box, it's hard to it's hard to turn it off now. I've thought about it numerous times, been back and forth on it. I don't think the comment box does anything for the channel because if it did, then the videos where I get a lot more comments and a lot more engagement, those videos should get a lot more views, right? I mean, if if engagement matters, those videos should get pushed. It's not the case. Um, videos where I've gotten two, three, four, five times as many comments as a regular video, they don't get any more views than any other videos. I don't think it really matters. But it's hard to go back now that I've been in this comment box so long. I mean, I do go live all the time and interact with people, but I don't know. But yeah, the comment box can be a cesspool at times. And my girlfriend wants no part of it. <laughs> fishing from scratch so he's a content creator he definitely wants to hear about that kind of stuff oh it must have been while i was talking about the business side of stuff yeah i get on them tangents sometime mojo mo jorison is my top five in college football right now you know i really haven't followed college as much this season but I would say Georgia, of the teams that I've seen a little bit of, Georgia's probably number one. You, Alabama struggled there against Texas, but they're Alabama. They're going to be there in the end. Ohio State's pretty good. Michigan's looking good this year. It's 
probably my top four. Who 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 would be number five? I'm leaving out somebody that's pretty good. Who am I disrespecting right now? Oklahoma. I'm disrespecting. I'm I'm forgetting somebody and disrespecting somebody. I don't know. Ultimately, it'll probably be in the playoff. You're going to have Georgia in there. You're probably going to have Alabama in there. Ohio State will get in because they're Ohio State, and who else are they going to play? That, that'll probably be your play. That'll be three out of your four in the playoff. Michigan may get in. I don't know. Whoever wins Michigan, Ohio State will probably get in for sure. Elijah, my dog's fixed. She shouldn't be giving no hormones. We got another fish on her. Look at this. Boy, it's been a while, y'all. We finally got another bite here. He's gonna pull too now. It's on the worm. Oh, he just come off. He just come off. Crap. We lost it. Got my worm. What time is it, y'all? Before I cast that back out, let me just see what time it is on here. Is it about noon? Eh, it's 11.30. I'll, uh, let me just catch, call it up on the comment box. I think we're gonna wrap it up here in a minute. I got that dog at the house I need to go let out. And the bite ain't been worth a crap here in an hour, so. I think we're gonna wrap it up here in a minute. George Melson says, thanks for the videos. He caught a 30-inch flathead this year. Awesome, man. Thanks for being a club member, too. No, Derek Parker, I never heard back from Tushy. I went through all that trouble to fill out their affiliate application. I mean, it was a long application, too. Never even got an email back from them. I do love my Tushy 2.0, though. Even if they may not want to work with me but I like their product. Marvin is Kayak Catfish Highlights <clears throat> is the other channel, mostly just for shorts. Shorts and shorter videos, but I may put some ultralight on there just to boost my watch time. Lord, Warrior 2 Alpha just hit me up with another 50. He says, thank you for doing what you do. Appreciate the fishing insight. Thanks for showing us. You're just another guy like us. Well, thank you so much, Warrior 2. Man, you have loaded me up today. I appreciate you so much. Y'all have made this a good day. You know, if I had been filming a normal video, I'd have done been at the house. I'd have packed it in because I wasn't going to listen to them guys. But you all, interacting with you all, we made it work, by gosh. We made it work. We caught some fish. Got some good fish out here today, some good quality carp. That's what I was hoping to get. I was hoping to get more of them. And I thought bait in this area, we'd, be, we'd have them turned on. Wasn't really the case, but we got some good fish. Between the line tangles and the noise and the helicopters and the geese, we've made it work today, by gosh. <laughs> but what do you say we get on out of here? I'm going to uh, go let that dog out, maybe get me some lunch. Maybe tinker with the boat this afternoon, see if I can rig up some kind of camera mount on that thing. Still don't know if I'm going to keep it. But I'm going to play with it some more. So, uh, anyway, let's get out of here, y'all. Lord, we still got a few hundred people watching, but I'm going to wrap it up. I guarantee you, somebody else is live on here right now. But, uh, anyway, y'all, if you've super chatted me today, thanks. If you've set through this, some of you have set through the noise. I appreciate you riding it out with me. I know it probably wasn't the best viewing experience, especially when I get pissed off at people, whether it be these people or the people in the comment box. Uh, it is what it is. I'm a human being. I get pissed off like everybody else. And when people tell me that I shouldn't be getting pissed off or tell me how to think, act, or feel, it pisses me off even more. So y'all, if I'm live, you just can't edit it out. It just is what it is. And if we run some people off, well, by God, we run some people off. This live stream audience is about getting quality over quantity. I want the, I want community around me. People that are like-minded 
that in, in, you know, people, if you're watching this live stream with me, it's like we're out here fishing together, you know? I feel like you, some of you all talk like you're out here with me. You feel like you're out here with me. And, and I kind of feel like you all are out here with me while I'm fishing because we're, we're talking, we're interacting, we're having conversation. If I don't like you, why the hell would I want to be fishing with you or have a conversation with you? And if you don't like me, why the hell are you, why would you want to go fishing with me? So anyway, that's how I feel about it. Um, I, I'd rather have less subscribers and better quality people than 500,000 subscribers and it be 499,000 that I hate. So anyway, I'm off on that rant uh, there again. But if you've stuck it out with me today, thanks. Glad we were able to get a few fish. Definitely, I will say this before I go, definitely a big improvement. So I filmed in this spot last week, last Wednesday or Thursday, I guess. We did the live stream from this spot. I hadn't baited. I hadn't done anything. We just, we cast baits out and went fishing and we got what? Two turtles and two channel cats or a channel cat in the blue, something like that. That was the only bites we got. And it was tough. I mean, it was, a, I mean, it was brutal. I was having to tell old nursing stories because the fishing was so slow. I come out here, I've baited this spot for two days now. I baited it Monday around lunchtime. And last night I come out and fished for an hour off camera. I caught three carp and I threw out a five gallon bucket of feed. This was seven, eight o'clock last night. I threw out another bucket. Big difference. You know, we didn't, we didn't catch a lot of fish out here today, but it was good quality and it was a much better day than what we had there last week when I hadn't baited. So baiting, I'm 100% convinced with the success I've had after baiting an area. And again, I was using cattle cubes and, and horse feed to bait. Definitely, baiting definitely makes a difference on the carp. I'm sold. I'm a 100% believer in baiting an area before you go out. And it seems to be 24, 48 hours seems to be the ticket. Because when I've baited areas like go out and throw a, a, some chum out and then wait you get some fish, but it seems like you get a lot more in an area if you've baited a day or two in advance. So um, I'm sold on that. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to wrap it up on that note. Thank you again to everybody who's tuned in today. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, I hope you had a good day. Chainsaw man up here. I'm, I'm glad they got finished before it got hot. You know, uh, I hope they're hydrating wherever they're at. I still feel like they owe me some super chats for the, for the, how how much they've disrupted the stream today but nevertheless anyway i'm getting out of here y'all i'll see you next time thanks for watching